One of the coldest October 10th days in Denver history. They got some snow and record low temperatures of 17 degrees. But it's a little bit better. Yesterday, it looked like January at Lambeau, but Coors Field tonight is rocking. They're expecting 50,000 as we get set for Game 3 of this National League Division Series. National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by BlackBerry. It is Rocktober all over again here in Denver, Colorado. Game three of a series that is all tied at one game apiece. It's the Philadelphia Phillies and the Colorado Rockies. And hi, everybody, and welcome from a frigid Denver, Colorado. Brian Anderson along with Joe Simpson. Great to have you with us tonight. We're certainly looking forward to this matchup because this series is just now getting good. It's all tied at one game apiece. The Phillies on the road for the first time in this set, uh, Joe. And the good news is it's going to be 14 degrees warmer. But the bad news is it is still going to be very chilly tonight. It's got a chance to be the coldest postseason game on record, Brian. It's a pitcher's kind of night. Doesn't bode well for the hitters. Nobody's going to want to get jammed or hit one off the end of the bat. You might see a lot of first pitch swinging tonight. Because of the weather, no game yesterday. That meant two days off between game two and game three, and it allowed the Philadelphia Phillies to counter with Jay Happ today instead of Pedro Martinez. Happ pitched on Thursday, was hit by this line drive from Seth Smith. He's okay now, and he's ready to go. That day off really worked in the favor of the Phillies, Brian, because the Phillies want to run their left-handed starters at Colorado. They feel like Colorado can't put their best team on the field if a lefty starts. With all due respect to Pedro Martinez, this is the best option for Philadelphia, having Jay Happ able to come back. He was 10-4 and four this year. He's definitely a Rookie of the Year candidate, and he will pound the zone with strike with fastballs tonight on these guys in this cold weather. Well, like Jay Happ, tonight's Rockies starter is uh, Jason Hamill. He makes his first career postseason start. No question, it is the biggest start of his career, but he's a guy who says he's used to this kind of weather. He grew up in Washington State. He says the cold weather will not bother him on the mound tonight. He's a guy you got to get early. He sometimes has trouble in the first three innings, but he's a hard thrower with a good curveball. He did beat the Phillies on August 4th. He's got good stuff, and it just depends on what he starts with tonight. The first couple of innings will be a telltale sign for him as to whether or not he's good as good stuff. Two six six starting pitchers. Hamill, the right-hander, and Jay Happ, the left-hander. It's a big one tonight. It's a pivotal game three as we get set. 31 degrees. They're expecting snow in an hour. It's baseball weather in Denver, Colorado. Stay with us.
the Rockies here as they return to the postseason. They were here in 2007. They called it Rocktober, and they're ready to do it again. 31 degrees, and it is some kind of cold here in Denver, Colorado. But better than yesterday. That's the good news. Game three tonight, game four tomorrow. And then if necessary, this series will return to Philadelphia on Tuesday. League Division Series coverage on TBS is brought to you in HD by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Let's get to the starting lineup first for the visiting Philadelphia Phillies, Joe. This is the lineup that Charlie Manuel posts tonight. And it's no different than the first two games. Brian Rollins leading it off, followed by Victorino, and then Chase Utley. Ryan Howard's having a good series so far. He'll be followed by Jason Worth, who has a triple and a home run already in the first two games. Raul Abana is in left in the bottom third of the order. Pedro Feliz at third base. Carlos Ruiz will do the catching. And J.A. Happ, known as Jay, to his teammates, will pitch and bat ninth. On the mound for the Rockies, Jason Hamill, 27 years old, 6'6", 220, out of Port Orchard, Washington, came to the Rockies in April in a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rockies lost Jeff, Jeff Francis, one of the stalwarts in the rotation. They needed somebody to take his place, and they were able to get Hamill, who went 10-8. and eight. He could have had a little better record. The bullpen blew four games for him. He beat the Phillies back on August 4th, pitched into the seventh inning, did not walk anybody. Team won 10 of his last 12 starts. The umpires for tonight's game behind the plate will be Jerry Meals at first base, Ron Culpa. Angel Hernandez is at second base. Tim Timmons at third. And down the lines, Jerry Davis and Bob Davidson. And, and Jerry Davis. Set to go. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, if there is need for a replay on a home run, he'll be the man who makes the call on a boundary ball. Jason Hamill, the big news, first of all, is that he's wearing sleeves, which is something he doesn't do very often and doesn't care to do very often, but it is that cold that he dons the sleeves here tonight, and his first pitch is down and away, and away we go from Coors Field in Game 3. Jimmy Rollins leads off 2 for 9 in this series. Rollins, the former MVP, a couple of gold gloves on his register as well. You can expect both pitchers to pitch inside a lot tonight, trying to intimidate the hitters a little bit with this cold weather. We watched batting practice today, and to be honest with you, there weren't very many balls flying into the seats, even at Coors Field. Normally a very, very hitter-friendly ballpark here. And it's always a place that Major League players, especially hitters, enjoy coming to because of the offensive threat here in this ballpark. Very big outfield, deep in the, uh, down the lines and in the alleys. But it's going to be a different story here tonight in the frigid temperatures. Yeah, it's always talked about as being a home run friendly park, but there is so much ground to cover for the outfielders. A lot of balls drop in. There are a lot of singles and gappers, too. But this is not the night, Brian, you want to get jammed and have a bat broken in your hand or hit one off the end of the bat. You'll feel it the rest of the game. Full count to Jimmy Rollins just underway from Coors Field in Denver. And Rollins, a little flare as Dexter Fowler settles under it. And that's how this night starts for Jason Hamill and the Rockies. Well, a huge outfield here at Coors Field. It opened in 1995. And let's take a look around the ballpark. Footage courtesy of the PlayStation game MLB 09 The Show. Very spacious except the right center. 375 to right center toward the Rockies bullpen. That's very hitter friendly. But the fence does go up to 14 feet right down the line and right to straight away right. That's kind of a catch-22 ballpark. You see outfielders play very deep here, but because of the large dimensions, you see a lot of balls drop in. A lot of the handle hits that are hit over the infielders' heads and in front of the outfielders. Takes a lot of speed to cover this outfield. So in that regard, the Rockies probably have the advantage over the Phillies. Shane Victorino is 
a little bit brash, I think, during batting practice, going no sleeves, no jacket, no sweatshirt, trying to show his teammates that it wasn't that cold, but does have some sleeves on, but not long ones. No, he is from Hawaii. He was the only Philly at his batting practice top. Every other one of the Phillies were in the full jackets and long sleeves. And down he goes. Hamill strikes out Victorino. Two up, two down in his first inning. Here's the defense behind Jason Hamill tonight for the Rockies, and it's a good defensive unit. In the outfield, left to right will be Gonzalez, Fowler, and Spillboards, who gets the start in right field tonight. Atkins, Tulowitzki, Barmas, and Helton, third to first. Also a good group. And Yorby Torrealba doing the catching. Well, best place to be tonight is on the mound. Second best place will be behind the plate. In constant motion back there, Chase Hudley bats with two outs. Udley has two hits in this division series. He is two for eight at the plate with three strikeouts, a 282 hitter during the regular year. Had another fantastic year in the power category, the RBI category. Drove in 93 runs this season. And he hits that one well into deep right center. That one's got a chance. It is way back there and gone. Chase Udley defying the cold weather. Sends one out of here. And the Phillies... Strike first. Charlie Manuel said to us before the game, Brian, that he'd love to have an early run, that he would work to try to manufacture one if he had to. Well, this is the simple way to do it. A low fastball. We've talked already in this series about what a great low ball hitter Chase Utley is. And even though the ball's not carrying, he hits one into the Phillies bullpen, well over 400 feet. An impressive shot on a night like this as Udley belts his first home run of the 2009 postseason and his third career postseason homer. The Phillies lead it one to nothing. And here's Ryan Howard. He sends one deep to right. That one is going to hook foul. Hamill is a guy who likes to work up in the zone. He can get away with a high fastball. But he dropped that one down about knee high, and it was launched by Utley. Ball and a strike on Howard. Ryan Howard tied for the major league lead in RBIs this year. He and Prince Fielder of the Milwaukee Brewers. Driving at 141 runs. And he's had a good postseason thus far. In the first two games, he has four hits. That includes two doubles, and he's driven in a pair. And they do have the shift on for him. Three infielders on the right side. Garrett Atkins playing shortstop. Some managers, when they do this, will... Leave the shortstop right where he is and move the third baseman over to the right side of second base. Got him. Hamill strikes out Howard. Two punch outs in the inning for Jason Hamill. But Chase Udley finds the sweet spot and hits one into the bullpen. The Phillies lead it one to nothing.
Right. And quickly, it's Carlos Gonzalez, Dexter Fowler, and Todd Helton here in the first inning. Troy Tulowitzki is the cleanup hitter. The story is that Rior Victoria was batting fifth tonight, and Atkins drops to number six. Then Spielborgs, Barmas, and Hamill rounding out the order. And they will face J.A. Happ. J. Happ, 26 years old, 6'6", 200 out of Peru, Illinois. And he's decided to go without long sleeves tonight. Played his college ball at Northwestern. He'll be 27 next Monday, and he's making his first career postseason start as he deals a strike to Carlos Gonzalez. He's about 88 to 93, anywhere in there with his fastball. Four-seamer primarily, but about 85 to 90 percent fastballs. He's also got a good changeup, and he will pitch up and in in the zone. Well, Charlie Manuel feels like he's got the right guy on the mound tonight. First of all, he's from Illinois, so he can handle the cold weather. Second of all, he's a guy who likes to pitch inside, especially to right-handed hitters with a cut fastball. And in cold weather, that can be a tough combination on a hitter. Lefties have a little trouble picking the ball up from him, too. They only hit 216 against him this year. He did give up 20 homers, but only three to left-handed hitters. Two balls and a strike on Carlos Gonzalez. Back in the leadoff spot for the Rockies. In game one of this best-of-five series, Dexter Fowler led off. Gonzalez hit second. That was the Cliff Lee masterpiece, the complete game six-hitter. A 5-1 Phillies win. On Thursday in Philadelphia, the Rockies hung on to win 5-4 to four to even the series. There's a base hit. So Gonzalez, who had three hits from the leadoff spot on Thursday, comes up with a single here in the first inning tonight. What a series this guy's having. Doesn't matter lefty or righty on the mound. Fastball down and away. He goes with it into center field. And he's now 6 for 10 in the series. Very impressive series for him so far. Gonzalez, a threat to run, had 16 stolen bases during the regular year and had a stolen base in game two. Phillies on the board first, a home run from Chase Udley. And now Colorado for the first time against Jay Happ. Jim Tracy felt good about Dexter Fowler's game in game two. He put down a bunt, delivered a couple of sacrifice flies. He was in situations where he could help the team and did. He said he thought that that would pay dividends for the rest of the series and the rest of the postseason for Colorado. Tracy very confident in his young hitters at the top of his lineup. Both Gonzalez and Fowler getting their first full season in the big leagues this year. Fowler made the jump from double A to the major leagues. Showed bunt there, but it didn't look like he was getting ready to sacrifice. Looked like he was thinking about bunting for a hit. Two balls and a strike. The Rockies have their leadoff runner aboard. And that one misses inside. That is the pitch that Hap must get and must have success with to be successful tonight. A little low in the zone. That change up. His favorite pitch, though, to right-handers, as you said, Brian, is the cutter to tie him up. Count goes full. Fast ball right at the bottom of the zone. Good call by Jerry Meals. Let's see if Gonzalez is running against the lefty. Stays put. Fowler lines one into left field. A base hit. Gonzalez on his way to third. And no throw. So the speedy Rockies at it early once again tonight. Gonzalez and Fowler with base hits. 
Colorado with runners at the corners and nobody out. Gonzalez was running, but he did the right thing. He made sure that Hap was going to the plate so he didn't get picked off. He still went first to third on this hit to left field. And Abanez did the smart thing. He had no play on Gonzalez. Trying to keep the double play in order. Made the play into second base with Fowler, a blazer, rounding first with a big turn. And now Todd Helton, a 325 hitter during the regular season, fourth highest batting average in the National League. Well, you see right away the big difference between Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia and Coors Field here in Denver. Left field, it's a short porch in Philly. But it's a big left field here at Coors, and it allows Gonzalez to go from first to third. Having to play deeper makes a huge difference for your base runners. Taking advantage of that. Helton has one hit in the series so far. He's one for nine. Helton drove in a run. In game two, he put the Rockies on the board first in Philadelphia on Thursday. Todd was talking about his approach tonight on Happ and how he knows that he's a good pitcher and he's got good stuff, but he feels like his fastball is somewhat straight. And he may be able to capitalize on that. Happ fired a complete game shutout at Colorado as recently as August 5th, a four-hitter, and he struck out 10 probably his best start of the season for the rookie Jay Happ. Well, one thing about Happ in September, he had his highest ERA of any month this year, 443. But he also had an intercostal strain suffered during batting practice in early September, missed a couple of starts, and then aggravated it again September 18th against Atlanta. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Helton gets jammed, a little bouncer. A flip to second for one. They cannot turn the double play. A run scores. Todd Helton has his second RBI of this series. And we are tied at one in the first inning as Gonzalez scores the run. Well, Todd Helton would be the first to tell you his RBIs have come on some real blistering hits, haven't they? <laughs> some real blistering contact. One went about 30 feet up the first baseline, and this one... Just barely trickled out to, it was so slow that Utley couldn't get the double play turn. And look at that face. That tells it all right there. Joe, you said in the open, you get jammed on your, your first time up. It's going to stay with you the rest of this game. It is indeed, and it'll, you'll, you'll be thinking about it next at bat. As Jim Tracy said, the beehive shows up and it never leaves. Troy Tulowitzki and a familiar ring when he comes to the plate here in Colorado. Tulowitzki turned 25 years of age yesterday. Thought he was going to be playing baseball on his birthday, but instead he got to play in the snow yesterday here in Denver. How would you like to have his future in this game at age 25 with the things he's already accomplished? And another 2020 season for him this year. Yeah, Tulowitzki stole 20 bases this year and popped 32 home runs for the Rockies. That one's off the end of the bat, but that's in the center field, a base hit. Boy, the hits are coming fast for the Rockies. Four batters that have faced half, three of them with hits. Target was inside, and he fought it off a little bit there, Brian. That looked like a cutter, and he just shook it into center field. And an early trip to the mound for Rich Duby, the Philadelphia pitching coach. Just to reset, take a deep breath, and restart. Jay Happ this year. Uh, just a 244 average against him for the year. 149 hits in 166 innings. That was outstanding. Well, and while Charlie Manuel 
says it's important to put his lefties, his lefty starters, on this left-handed dominant Colorado lineup. The Rockies are quick to point out they beat a left-handed starter in game two. They beat Cole Hamels to even this series in one game apiece. Three hits already. A run is in. Just one out. And here is Yorvi Torre Alba making his first start of the season batting in the fifth spot in the order. He's been a guy typically hitting down in the order as low as eighth in the National League lineup. But that's regular season Torre Alba. This is postseason Torre Alba. This is a situation that Jim Tracy described to us exactly in our pregame meeting, Brian, and that is with Helton and Tulowitzki on base on what he calls with some traffic out there, meaning base runners, he likes the idea of Toriawa batting with them on base. And that's because he's been so successful driving in runs in the postseason. He went 5 for 10 against the Phillies two years ago in the division series. Now, Toriawa, three hits and six tries in the postseason this year. A double, a homer. He's driven in a pair. He had a red-hot final month of the season for the Rockies. Had more RBIs in the month of September than he did in all the months put together leading up to the final month. And played his way right back into the starting everyday job behind the plate for Colorado. Twenty pitches already for Jay Happ. Still just one out. And I will say this in Jay Happ's defense, having given up the three hits, is that Gonzalez put a sw good swing on a pitch down and away. He did have to throw a strike three and two to Fowler, but then Helton hit one off the thumbs. To Lewiski fought one off up the middle. It's not like he's laying it right down the middle. Fowler's probably the best hit ball of this frame so far. And Toriyama chased one upstairs. Down he goes. So a strikeout for Hap, his first of the game, and that's out number two. He likes to do this when he gets ahead in the count, his elevated fastball. He doesn't have to go like helmet high, but just a tick above the letters, let's say, and it's tough to catch up to. Two gone for Garrett Atkins. Helton at second with two Lewitsky at first. And Hap finds the corner. Atkins has a hit in this series. He had a double in game one. He's one for six. Three strikeouts. Had a down season this season. And lost his everyday job to Ian Stewart. But it's been Atkins who's been getting the starts in this postseason with all of the left-handed starting pitchers of the Phillies. Brian, this entire lineup tonight for the Rockies, lifetime against Jay Happ, three for 26. All combined, three for 26. They have three hits already this inning. And he's just trying to exercise some damage control here. Then a 25 pitch inning for Hap. Philly's got a home run from Udley in the top of the first. An RBI from Todd Helton tied it up. Atkins has been a run-producing machine for the Rockies until this year. Matter of fact, beginning in 05, he led the Rockies in RBIs. And it seemed year after year, a guy who was driving in 100 runs a season. But this year, for some reason, he has lost that stroke and that run production. But as Jim Tracy says, if it was in there before, 
That means it's still in there, and he's yeah. hoping it shows up in the postseason. This is an awfully tough record home team uh, after Jim Tracy took over. Only the Yankees had a better home record than the Rockies at 44 and 17. Mm. He's going 43 and 15. Tracy took over this job on May 29th. Clint Hurdle was the manager to start the year. It was Clint Hurdle who brought the Rockies to the postseason in 07. Tracy was his bench coach. And this team turned it around once that man took over. They basically played 600 baseball for the final four months of the season, which is tough to do in this game. Franchise record for wins in a season with 92. And overall, 51-30 and 30 here at Coors Field. 21 games over 500 in their home ballpark. There's the cutter. Perfect count for it. He'd worked a couple of pitches away, and Atkins didn't offer. Then he came right back in on his hands. Targets up and in. And Garrett, all he can do is fight it off, and you can see it's up out of the zone, but when you've got two strikes on you, in this case a two and two count, Atkins is trying to guard the plate a little bit and offered. Pitch number eight of the at bat against Atkins, and he takes a ball. Wow. Full count on Garrett Atkins. That'll give the runners a head start here with a three two count and two outs. Hawkeye Atkins on that one. Runners go. Atkins with a base hit. Pelts it around third. He will score. Tulowitzki on his way to third. He's in there. Colorado has the lead. As Atkins drives in a run. Two to one Rockies. On a pitch that looked like they had Atkins struck out on a 2-2 count. He comes back three and two and makes him pay for that extra pitch. It's his first RBI of the series. And once again, on a base hit to left, the Rockies going first to third. Tulowitzki was off at the pitch, and that helped. But after giving up the home run to Utley, the Rockies come right back with two of their own and looking for more. Two runs on four hits against Jay Happ in this first inning. And the seventh man to hit in this inning, Ryan Spillboards, will step in. First and third, two outs. Thirty two pitches already. He's just not hitting his spots. He prefers to pitch into right-handers, but so far trying to hit that outside corner, he's missed by quite a bit. Has been in a three-ball count to the first six hitters as Spielberg swings away 2-0. Ryan Spielberg's Last time the Rockies met the Phillies in the postseason back at 07. He was the starting center fielder during that Rockies three game sweep of Philadelphia. Tonight gets the start in right field for the second consecutive game and that is a line drive to center going to be caught. Spielboards hit that like a rope. But right at Victorino the inning is over but the Rockies score twice and they have the early lead tonight.
night for the pitcher, you would think, a 31-degree night here at the ballpark. There has been some offense early. Two runs on four hits for the Rockies, answering a Chase Udley home run in the first inning. And we want to welcome all of you who have been watching the Twins and the Yankees as the Yankees are headed to the American League Championship Series. Todd Helton reaching over and unable to come up with it. Well, Joe Simpson, all of a sudden, it's the Rockies and the Phillies in the spotlight. The uh, last two standing in the divisional series. Good effort by Helton here than a fan that he thought may have gotten in his way. A fair game when you reach into the crowd, but Todd thought he had a chance to catch that one, except the fan deflected it. Now, these two teams are evenly matched up and down, Brian, from their defense to their home run hitting, run scoring. And it's so far it's played out that way. Dodgers taking care of the Cardinals last night. Los Angeles will host game one of the National League Championship Series. So the Phillies and the Rockies fight for the right to head to Los Angeles on Thursday. That one pretty well hit to right. Spillboards makes the catch. Jason Wirth is retired. One gone here in the second inning. Let's check in with the third member of our team, David Aldridge. David? Well, and Joe, tonight, this is one of those nights where you subtly or not so subtly encourage your starting pitcher to work quickly. There's a hot shot by Ibanez. Hamill recovers and gets his man. Nice play. Outstanding play by Hamill, who knocked it down. He appears to be all right, but then he didn't panic when he went to retrieve it. Once he got to the ball, he took his time to find the target at first and gave a nice throw to Helton. But David makes a good point about the defense, and I talked to Troy Tulowitzki myself before the game about that, and given his experience playing in the cold weather here, especially in April in Denver, he said, I usually have a, a hand warmer in my back pocket, and if I can keep my hand warm, I'll be just fine. And, of course, the Rockies have those specially made hats, too, that have the Built-in ear flaps in them. Those, those will come in handy as the game goes along, too. Coldest games in Coors Field history. Back in 1997, it was slightly colder than it is here today. That was the same year, by the way, as far as postseason history goes, that the coldest game played, the 97 season in the World Series. Remember the uh, Cleveland Indians against the Florida Marlins? In 1997, that was game four of that World Series. That was a ball club that Charlie Manuel was a part of in Cleveland. He was the hitting coach that year. It was snowing during batting practice. And believe it or not, they're saying it could snow. We could see some flurries here in the next hour or so. We're only in the second inning. It has a good chance to get well below that 28 mark. <laughs> A lot of Elmer Fudds in the stands tonight. <laughs> Hunting Wabbits. <laughs> Good breaking ball from Hamill. Pedro Feliz. Two balls and two strikes. Hamill gave up the home run to Utley in the first, but had two strikeouts. Boy, that caught a piece of Tori Alba. Feliz just got a piece, and it got a bigger piece of the Rockies catcher. Yeah, we talk about the hitters getting jammed or hitting one off the end of the bat. Wow, that looked like it missed the chest protector and got him in the abdomen. Goodness. Mm. Oh, man, caught him twice. Right there in the looked side. Like the side and down on the ankle. and. 
He's ready to go. Coming back with a breaking ball. The 2-2. Two -two. Hamill strikes out Feliz. Three punch outs for the 6-6 six -six Hamill. David Aldridge, great to have you with us on a very cold night in Denver. Temperatures headed under 30 degrees here shortly. Jay Hap needs a quick inning, Brian, and get his fielders back in the dugout where they can warm up. They were out there a long time in the bottom of the first. Little bouncer by Clint Barmas and the Gold Glove Philadelphia shortstop Jimmy Rollins takes care of him. It's a 35 pitch inning for Hap. In the first inning, the Rockies scored twice, but remember, Spielborg's hit a line shot with a couple of men on base. If that finds a gap either way or drops in front, it could be a different story. Yeah, and Shane Victorino had a hard time reading that one off the bat. He broke in, stopped, and then had to come in some more. Good play by Shane. And that's a big strike zone right there. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. The six foot six inch Jason Hamill had six hits this year. A 109 batting average. Six hits and 55 times at the plate. His career batting average slightly better, 126. <laughs> <laughs> and this struck fear in Jay Happ. He's gone 3 and 0 on him. See him rubbing up the baseball a lot. Kind of hard to get a good grip on a cold night like this. Baseball's a little slick. And umpires will allow the pitchers to blow on their hands, try to warm it up, something that is not permitted 
in the normal temperatures. But Hap walks Hamill. So a light hitting pitcher walks with one man out. And back to the top of the order we go. Here is today's leaderboard brought to you by John Hancock. Best road ERA in the National League belongs to this man, Jay Happ, in his rookie season, outdoing Chris Carpenter, Zambrano, Jair Jurgens of the Braves, and Randy Wolf. Impressive numbers in an impressive rookie campaign for Jay Happ. Yeah, and it tied for the best road ERA in the major leagues with Felix Rodriguez of Seattle. Happ was a 12 game winner this year. That led all National League rookies. 12 and 4 record. And an ERA of 293. Back to the top of the order, Carlos Gonzalez. Popped his sixth hit of this series so far in the first inning. He singled and scored. Jammed him. A little pop up in the infield. And that's out number two. While you never want to walk the pitcher, you want to have him swing the bat, especially when there's nobody on and you want to go through the inning quick. Having him stand out there in the cold temperatures may not be a bad thing, especially if he's got to run from first to third or hustle on a ground ball. See if it affects him at all going to the third. As much as he enjoys being on base, he'd much rather, as far as comfort, be in the dugout. They have the big heaters going in the dugouts. They sound like jet engines down there. That was a rally started by a pitcher for the Rockies on Thursday. Aaron Cook singled off Hamels in the fifth inning and eventually came around to score a run. In a game, the Rockies would win 5-4. Two gone for Dexter Fowler. His hit in the first inning, his first in the postseason. Got a good look in the Rockies dugout a second ago of the, that heater, and I, I saw Vinny Castilla down there, who's a longtime Rocky favorite here. And an assistant to the GM and an infield instructor. And Vinny's going to be a cheerleader down there tonight as long as he doesn't have to venture far from the heater. No. His enthusiasm depends on how far from the heater he is. Yeah, I'm with you all the way as long as I can stand right here. Where are you taking that thing? Oh, oh hey, hey, hey. We'll, we'll see if Vinny makes that trek also. <laughs> Let me help you with that. Must be out of fuel. Speaking of fuel, Jay Happ's not going to have much fuel left tonight. He keeps pitching this deep into counts. This mm. is the second time he's gone three and two on Fowler. Fifth one out of 11 hitters. He's up to 50 pitches already. Well, like for any pitcher, it's important to get ahead early. Strike one, so important. Half tonight, first pitch strikes, only two of 11 that he has faced. But all that being said, and all the offense that is on the board, the Rockies have two runs and four hits. It's only two runs. And half an out away from getting out of the inning as Hamill takes off, Fowler strikes out. So the second strikeout for Jay Happ. Two to one Rockies. The Phillies are coming up. As we head to the third inning.
MLB Division Series coverage on TBS presented by BlackBerry continues Monday. 6 o'clock is game time for game four of the Phillies and the Rockies. Coverage begins at 5.30 p.m. Eastern with MLB on deck. And it'll be the only game in town at this point. Three of the four division series have concluded. A dramatic comeback win for the Los Angeles Angels today at Fenway Park. Coming back against one of the game's great closers in Jonathan Papelbon. The Angels sweep the Red Sox. The Yankees get back-to-back home runs from A-Rod and Posada. And go on to win 4-1 to over the Minnesota Twins as they officially close down the Metrodome as far as baseball is concerned. Tremendous year for the Minnesota Twins chasing down the Detroit Tigers. I know they had expectations, higher expectations than three and out. But congratulations to them on a terrific season. Twins will be headed to a brand new ballpark, Target Field, next year. An open air stadium, so this... Might have a familiar yeah. ring to it next April in yeah, Minneapolis. They, may want to come here tomorrow and just see what it's like. <laughs> Reconsider not having a roof. <laughs> Jason Hamill faces Carlos Ruiz to start this third inning. 50,000 on hand here tonight at Coors Field in Denver. And it's been a big sports day here in downtown Denver. The Broncos winning in overtime today. Nice play, Atkins. Low throw dug out by the gold glover, Helton. Out number one in this third inning. Good play by Atkins on the short hop to the backhand side. This ball was hit hard. And a low throw dug out by Helton. He's one of the best at scooping the ball on the short hops. Helton with three gold gloves in his career. A five-time All-Star. And uh, might be on his way to a gold glove this season. Sometimes it matters the kind of offensive numbers you post in order to win a gold glove. And Helton back to form with the bat this year. So far so good for... Jason Hamill with the exception of one pitch, and that was hit out of the park by Utley, but he looked sharp tonight. Hamill strikes out Hap on three pitches, his fourth strikeout already. Coors Field in Denver. Rocktober baseball resumes here in Lodo, the lower downtown district. Brian Anderson, Joe Simpson, David Aldridge. This is game three of this best of five National League Division Series. The Phillies won the opener behind Cliff Lee's gem. The Rockies beat Cole Hamels in game two to even the series. Cold weather forced cancellation of yesterday's game. Cold and snow. Pushing it back to Today. And then the series will resume tomorrow. Jason Hamill early in the year was encouraged by Bob Apodaca to work in a two-seam fastball to go with his four-seamer. It was not successful. He got knocked around. He lost command. He's a guy who has good control, but he just couldn't control the two-seamer. So he ditched it, went back to his four-seamer, and finished up the season on a good note. So hitters will tell you that from Jason Hamill, there is nothing straight. Even his four-seam fastball, which for a lot of pitchers is a straight fastball. His four-seamer even has movement. No straight pitches coming out of this right-hander. Makes it tough on a hitter to square him up. One of the things to watch for, too, is if he does get in a hurry and starts rushing to the plate and dragging his arm a little bit, as long as he stands tall, stays straight up over the pitching rubber, He'll have good command. He'll also have a whole lot better break on his over-the-top curveball. Rollins swings over the top of a breaking ball. Back-to-back strikeouts for Hamill. He's got five.
slash TBS Hot Corner to sign up and watch live companion coverage of this game and every MLB postseason game. Hot Corner sounds pretty good right now. It would sound real good to me if it had some Hot Corner cocoa mixed in with it. (laughs) Helton drove in a run with a fielder's choice his last time up, and then he scored the second Rockies run. Colorado with two runs on four hits in the first. And again, Hap having trouble throwing first pitch strike. And I don't care how cold it is, especially down 2-1 to one already, you cannot pitch to the Rockies in 2-0, and 3-1, oh, 3-2 and one, three and two counts where you've got to throw strikes. Colorado, a ball club that led the National League this year in walks. And in this series, you're looking at two of the best offenses statistically in the National League. Yeah, that was a funny part of their team, though. They, they led in walks, but they set a team record for strikeouts. Those two you don't usually go hand in hand as Helton no. fouls one away. But they've got some guys who will work the count. They've got a lot of free swingers. As the uh, Colorado hitting coach and former Rockies manager their first time around in the postseason back in 95. And we had to identify him because I'm not sure too many people would know who he was in that outfit. (laughs) He's a former MVP as a player, 1979 with the Angels. Most valuable player of the American League. He was the manager here in Colorado when the Rockies captured the first ever wild card in the National League back in 95. As Helton draws the walk, so the pitch count rises for Jay Happ. A leadoff base runner for the Rockies for the second time in the first three innings. Happ wanted this pitch. And it was just off the corner. Even Todd Helton wasn't real sure as he was walking out of the box. Happ wanted a call in the first inning that he didn't get to Atkins when he thought he had him struck out. And Atkins followed with an RBI single. Here's Tulowitzki. Single in the first. Tulowitzki now with three hits in the divisional series. Three for eight at the plate. Had a double and an RBI in game one. Boy, it took a mighty hack. We talked about these fans earlier, Brian, and it is a tribute to these hearty Denver fans for turning out tonight in these numbers. Rockies drew a little over 2.6 million, an average right at 33,000 per date for their home games, but this is a crowd of over 50,000 after, as you said, there was a football game just Mm -hmm. down the street earlier today. And a thrilling finish. Oh, yeah. That's a good look. Uh Uh-huh. Like Chewbacca. Ball and two strikes on Tulowitzki. So while the Broncos stay undefeated, the Broncos played the Patriots today. Much better conditions than what we have here tonight as the temperature has dropped to 30. Tulowitzki in the right. Jason Wirth will settle under it. And it's out number one. For Hap in the third inning. Good change up there from Hap. Maybe that's a sign of good things to come for him. Well, it's time for the big hit brought to you by Hass Avocados. Take you back to game two, fourth inning, two outs, and Todd Helton on first. It was your Vittori Alba with a two run home run off Cole Hamels to give the Rockies a three to nothing lead. The home run was Tori Alba's second career postseason home run. It was his first home run. Since early May, got to go all the way back to May 6th against the Giants to find his last home run. Tori Alba said it was his first home run since 1975. (laughs) Well, it was timely. (laughs) 
he he said he wasn't real sure how to run the bases. Was he you know is he supposed to sprint around? Is he supposed to Cadillac and do a home run trot? But he was mostly running on air as he gave the Rockies a big hit in game two in a game that the Rockies would go on to win five to four. Well, he may have thought it was somewhat lucky, but he's had a good series, three for seven. He's also got a double to go with that home run. And again, that's why Jim Tracy moved him into the five spot in the order tonight. Something he has not done all season for Colorado. Had one pinch hit appearance in the five spot in the batting order, but this is his first start of the year. Matter of fact, you go through his career register, he has very few at-bats as a five-hole hitter, just 12 in only nine games. So this is an unfamiliar run-producing spot for a guy who typically hits down at the bottom of the order. Toriyama struck out in the first, chased a high fastball. He chased another one, and down he goes. His half goes right back to the high fastball, and Torrey Alba is Hap's third strikeout victim. And that's even higher than the one before. Again, he likes to go upstairs when he gets ahead in the count to see if he'll chase, and Torrey Alba upset with himself for not laying off that one. You could hear him mouthing to himself, get the ball down. Two outs for Hap. Garrett Atkins, the batter, with a runner at first, a leadoff walk. Atkins drove in a run with a single his last time up and made a terrific play defensively on Carlos Ruiz in the third inning. I know Ian Stewart has had the better year and more or less took over at third base after Atkins just couldn't get off those bad numbers he had for most of the year. But he's still a solid player, and he's a good third baseman. Not as good defensively as Stewart, but he can swing the bat. In the center field, Victorino on the run at the track. It's over his head. Can Helton score? He's around third. And the throw cut off. Helton scores. Atkins has driven it a pair. And the Rockies lead it 3-1. to one. Hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark. Fastball right in the center of the plate, about belt high. Short hops the 415 mark. And Victorino got too close to the wall. It short hops the wall back up over his head, which took a little extra time and gave Helton all the time he needed. Even after slipping around second base, able to score standing up. RBI double for Garrett Atkins, his second hit, his second RBI as Spielborgs takes a hack at a changeup. Now Atkins, his four-year average until last year, he drove in over 100 runs a season for the Rockies. Jim Tracy said, I know it's in there somewhere, and it has certainly showed up tonight. He's been a big run producer already. Spielborg's lined out his last time up with a couple of runners on base. Hit one right on the nose to center field for the final out of the first. Seventy three pitches and if the left-handers are causing the Rockies to have to adjust their lineup and leave a couple of left-handed hitters out of there they wouldn't normally leave. The right-handers are picking up the slack tonight. Atkins with two hits and two RBIs. Tulowitzki has a hit. Fowler, a switch hitter, has a base hit. And Todd Helton, one of the lefties in the lineup for the Rockies, has been on base twice and scored twice. If there's 
something good about the weather tonight, at least to this point, it's that the wind is not blowing. It's a very calm night, which is a blessing for all of these players. Otherwise, this game might not be played because it would be too cold to play. So it did not affect that ball that was hit over Victorino's head. Spielborg's a big cut and a miss. The inning is over, but the Rockies add one to it. Attack on run from Garrett Atkins, and it's 3-1 to one, Colorado. Another thing about Hamill, Brian, is that as he issues a leadoff walk, which is certainly not good, especially in this part of the order, but I talked earlier tonight about how he gives up runs early. If you don't get him early, you don't get him. 63% of the runs he allowed this year came in the first three innings, and he just zipped right through the first three innings, allowing only the homer to Utley. Jason Hamill in his first year as a Rocky, they picked him up. Right before the season began this year from the Tampa Bay Rays. Hamill was in a fight with Jeff Neiman for the final spot in the rotation with Tampa Bay. And uh, did not win that spot. 
Colorado needed some depth with Jeff Francis undergoing shoulder surgery as Utley sends one to right, a base hit. So a leadoff walk and now a hit. And here come the Phillies, two on to start this fourth inning. Cold weather not bothering Chase Utley at all tonight. Another pitch down, too. He's so quick. You know, I was standing next to Chase in the in the locker room tonight, and you look at him next to some of the players on the Phillies team, especially Ryan Howard, and he, he looks somewhat slight. Not small, but slight. But this guy's a big, solid guy. Six one, almost 200 pounds, and a lot stronger than he looks, not to mention how quick he is with a bat. But a leadoff walk in any inning in this part of the order, and you're asking for trouble with the fills. So two on for Ryan Howard. One of the most feared run producers in baseball. The last four years, former MVP Ryan Howard. And he'll get some MVP consideration this year as well. Looks like Albert Pujol is probably the favorite to win the National League Most Valuable Player Award. Certainly Prince Fielder had a great year with the Brewers. But Ryan Howard back at the top of the league at RBIs once again. Howard with a 45 home run season. Third most in the National League and 141 RBIs. And that one's banged in the right center. A base hit. Victorino around third. He will score. Udley's on his way to third. As the Phillies are on the board here in the fourth, a walk and two hits. Second time through the order, too, and the Phillies are getting some better swings at Jason Hamill. After making only one mistake in the strike zone through three innings, he's made a couple this inning, and the leadoff walk got it all going. And Jim Tracy to the phone as he sends Bob Apodaca, the Rockies pitching coach, out to the mound. One of the things he told us, Brian, was when Jason Hamill loses it, he loses it in a hurry. And you can't just keep riding and thinking, well, he'll, he'll come out of it and everything will be okay. He said you've got to be on top of it and have somebody in the bullpen ready because when it goes, it goes quickly for Hamill. And true to his word, Tracy gets the bullpen started here in the fourth. A leadoff walk to Victorino. Utley with his second hit of the game. And Howard with an RBI single as Matt Belisle begins to get loose in the Colorado bullpen. And his ERA at home, as you see there, at 5.6 or 5.73, two and a half runs higher than it was on the road. Three to two Rockies. Here's Jason Worth. Second time through the batting order for the Phillies against Hamill. And they produced two hits and a walk. Worth has had a big series already. That's three hits, including a triple and a home run. Has driven in a couple of runs. Has thrown out a runner at third base from the outfield. Coming off a career year this year. Worth with 36 home runs. 99 runs driven in this season for the Phillies. And needless to say, you don't want to pitch behind in the count to these guys either. Popped him up foul and out of play. A telling stat there. 340 batting average for the opponents when Hamill falls behind in the count. Well, it's they start sitting on that fastball. As good as it is, when they're just sitting on it, they're going to catch up to it. That slider too far off the plate to get worth to offer it it. Rockies playing back defensively, willing to concede a tying run for a double play. Hitters count for Worth. 
Nobody out. Runners at the corners. And it's ball four. And it's hard to believe, but Jason Hamill could be on the ropes here. You think about Hamill retiring nine of the first ten he faced in this game. But the Phillies are close to a knockout punch here with this Rocky starter. Yeah, and again, it goes back to what Jim told us. And he's sitting over there wrestling with leaving him in. There's nobody out and already a run in. And knowing that he's seen this before where he can't afford to wait too long. The Phillies belted 11 grand slams this year. A team record and a National League high. And Ibanez takes a cut at one. Hamill is ahead of him. Second time through the batting order has been a challenge for Hamill. During the regular year, the league hit 294 against him. Second time through the batting order. Two hits and two walks here tonight. Well, here's another telling number about him, uh, and it has to do with his batting average against. It was 290. That's that's very high, needless to say, lefties and righties combined. But with men on base, it goes up. It's up over 300 with men on base. And we'll see what happens here with the bases loaded and nobody out. Good pitch. It looked like the curveball. Yeah, and a beauty right over the top. Ball and two strikes on Ibanez, who has four runs batted in in the first two games of this series. This is a big pitch coming for... Jason Hamill, despite being in the fourth inning. Ibanez had a good cut. Count stays at one and two. Take you back to April 11th. Ibanez hits one out right here at Coors Field against Jason Hamill. Hamill pitching out of the bullpen at that point. Didn't pitch his way to the starting rotation until April 27th. It was in the second deck, too. Boy, he has fought off two 93-mile-an-hour fastballs that were right in on his hands. Two tough pitches to fight off when you're behind in the count. And even though he hit a comebacker to the mound his first time up, it was a shot that was knocked down by Hamill and then recovered to throw him out. That was back of the second. Down to the dirt. Terrific play by Yorvi Torre Alba. It was not an easy pitch to block. That was a breaking ball. He shifted knowing it was going to come back to him a little bit on the bounce. But it bounced so far out in front of him. He, he did a great job smothering that one. Great play. Saves a run. Nobody out. The base is loaded. Ibanez has even the count at two and two. Hanging tough, Raul Ibanez. We notice Tori Alba in Philadelphia setting up on one side of the plate and then moving quickly to the other late in the game, Brian. And He's doing that a little bit with Ibanez here, setting up way inside and then moving to his left. And I'm guessing that he's trying to make sure the Phillies are not sending any kind type of location signs from second base. See what he has in mind on a 2-2 pitch. Missed with a fastball. <laughs> and the count goes full, 3-2, and two, and nowhere to put Ibanez. I mean, that was so far. Look at the- Torrealba had his glove on the ground. He was tapping the ground because he wanted it low, even in the dirt. And it was high and out of the zone. So he's really missing his mark this inning. Hamill. Could be a game-changing at-bat here. This is pitch number nine. Ibanez has worked it full. Phillies have a run in with the bases loaded. And Torrealba on his way to the mound. Ibanez, an all-star for the first time in his career. 
at the age of 37. And he's been a big run producer in the American League, especially in the last four years. The last three years, he's driven in over 100 runs. But that was in Seattle as a Mariner. He signed a three-year deal with the Phillies in the offseason. Walked him. What an at-bat by Ibanez. A bases-loaded walk, and we are tied here in the fourth inning. And decision time for Jim Tracy. That at-bat was highlighted by those two pitches he fouled off with the count one and two. Two 93-mile-an-hour heaters that he fought off and able to lay off that breaking ball down and in. And he gets his fifth RBI already. Hamill stays. Here's Feliz. And he falls behind the Phillies third baseman. Pedro Feliz, a good high fastball hitter. Likes the ball out away from him. Can drive it with authority to right center if you work it away. Hamill struck out Feliz on that pitch. Back in the second inning. Threw him a couple, as a matter of fact, and punched him out. His third strikeout. He's a former giant, so he played a lot of games here. Yeah, no visiting players. Hit more home runs here at Coors Field. Broken bat. Got a chance for two here. To the plate for one. Tori Alba to first. In time. A big play for the Rockies. One, two, three, double play. Boy, was that just what Jason Hamill needed. Broken bat, little dribbler back to him. Still one to get, but that's a huge play for him. That at least for the time being keeps him in the game. So two outs, runners at second and third. And Carlos Ruiz will hit. Got the pitcher on deck. Don't want to make a mistake here if you're the Rockies, and that might be why Torrey Alba's going to the mound. You know, something to think about as well for Charlie Manuel and the Phillies. You've got Jay Happ ready to hit next, and just in case, Joe Blanton begins to get loose for the Phillies. So both bullpens are hot right now as we play in the fourth inning. Two outs, runners at second and third in a tie game. As Ruiz takes strike one. And Hap with 76 pitches on his ledger already. You wouldn't be surprised at all if Charlie Pinch hit for him if they pitch around Ruiz. Didn't look like it on that pitch. Went right after him. Carlos Ruiz, not a guy who walks much, doesn't strike out much, usually puts the ball in play. Has a hit in this postseason. He's one for six now, but he has drawn two walks. Fastball hitter who likes to pull the ball, and he will wait you out for that fastball that he can hit. Almost hit him. Two balls and a strike. Carlos Ruiz had a big hit in game one this past Wednesday. Had an RBI single in the fifth inning. It was the first run scored of this postseason. The first RBI for either team. And gave Cliff Lee all he would need. Good curve ball again. He's made some good pitches with that. This inning, when he couldn't with his other pitches, especially the fastball. Yeah. 
Rockies fans wanted a ring up. Count goes full, three and two. A little high. Good call by Jerry Meals. High and in. Well, if Hamill gets through this mess, a bases loaded, nobody out mess, Coors Field will erupt. The 3 2. Bouncer to Atkins. Never mind, a foul ball hit his foot. And we'll do it all over again. Right off the outside of his foot. And quick call from Meals on that one. He could hear that. Now, if he can get out of this with only having the game tied up, Brian, it will be miraculous. Now, and if he walks Ruiz, it's not the worst thing in the world. He'd like to retire him, but it will force a decision from Charlie Manuel, who would certainly go to the bench for a pinch hitter. He's got a lot of guys in the bullpen who can go extra innings tonight. The 3-2. And a bouncer, a base hit for Ruiz. Wirt scores. Ibanez will hold around third as Carlos Ruiz puts the Phillies on top. His second RBI of the postseason, and it's a 4-3 to three Philadelphia lead. And like Abanez, he fought off a breaking ball to get a pitch that he could handle a little better. That was a slider, wasn't a curveball, and it stayed inside. And again, he likes to pull the ball and pulled one in the hole. Sam Perlazzo had to hold Abanez at third because Raul does not run well. So Jay Happ will be pulled back. The starter for the Phillies is out after just three innings. But his club has a lead, and Charlie Manuel, sensing an opportunity here, will call on Greg Dobbs, and that forces the Rocky skipper from the dugout. Yeah, and my point about Charlie's bullpen, he's got Blanton, Kendrick, Pedro Martinez, among others down there who can pitch multiple innings in long relief tonight if he needs them to. That's how fast it can go. Jason Hamill retired nine of the first ten. Cannot get through the fourth inning. We'll take a break. has shown up early and often. Four to three the score. The Phillies have just taken the lead. Philadelphia with a run in the first on an Utley home run, but now three in this fourth inning. And this one is going to be decided by the bullpens as both starting pitchers are out of the game. In the game for the Rockies, trying to get the final out of this Philadelphia fourth is right-hander Matt Belial. Matt had a good inning of work here or in Philadelphia for the Rockies. A perfect inning, including a strikeout in game two. A guy who spent some time, was drafted by the Braves, spent some time in the big leagues with the Cincinnati Reds, but was non-tendered last year and wound up in a Colorado Rockies uniform, and he's pitched real well for them. 
No, a bit of a surprise for Belial that he became a free agent. Jason Hamill cruising right along through the first three innings. Second time through the batting order, giving him trouble. Three and two-thirds here tonight. Still two runners that are his responsibility. Walks three, strikes out five. And all three of the walks coming in this fourth. Here's Greg Dobbs to pinch hit. The walk's a real rarity in a sense for Hamill in that he had seven different starts this year where he didn't walk a batter. And tonight, all three walks in the fourth, none of the five strikeouts have been this inning. Ball and a strike on Dobbs. Dobbs has been Philadelphia's best pinch hitter the last couple of seasons. He was the best pinch hitter in the National League last year. But a bit of a down season in 2009. Yeah, it's been a rough year for him. A little soft liner. Barmas cuts it off. The play is at second. And the Rockies are out of the inning. But Philadelphia scores three runs. And the Phillies have taken the lead here in Denver, 4-3, to three, as we head to the home fourth. nights at 11 10 central starting november 9th only on tbs sellout crowd here at coors field in denver as joe blanton takes over for the phillies both starters are out jay hap goes three innings but the phillies have taken the lead here in denver tonight clint barmas leads the way it'll be barmas the pitcher spot, then back to the top of the order in Carlos Gonzalez, as you see the numbers on Joe Blanton this year. Yeah, and all of that was as a starter. 
Ryan Howard in foul territory. One away. He worked an inning in game two, gave up a hit and a run. That was only his fourth ever relief appearance, make it his fifth. And the first three came the first time he got called up. He's going without sleeves tonight. Fastball, curveball, and a changeup, and he'll throw his changeup at any time. Likes to work fast. Let's check in with David Aldridge. David? Now, Bland has been a starting pitcher, used to that starting role, but Charlie Manuel talks about his toughness, his competitiveness, and a guy who can adjust to different roles. You know, he's not so set in his ways that pitching out of the bullpen will affect him. As Matt Belisle getting an at-bat in the postseason rolls out to Jimmy Rollins. Well, this is a perfect spot for Blanton to come in. The last out made by the Phillies was the nine spot, the pitcher spot. So depending on how long it takes them to get back to the pitcher spot in the order, he can go two in as many as three innings perhaps before they've got to make a change or pinch hit for him. Two up, two down for Blenn. Top of the order now, Carlos Gonzalez. One thing Blanton does well that his fielders will appreciate as he works fast. Usually takes the throw from the catcher, the return throw, standing on the rubber, ready to go. Gonzalez one for two. Had three hits from the leadoff spot on Thursday. Guys had some good at bats. From left against lefties and righties. Really stays on the ball a long time. That one's well hit to right. Gonzalez will watch this one go. A missile of a home run for Gonzalez. And we're all tied at four. That was a shot from the Rockies' leadoff hitter. But just like we said, Brian, it's going to be a low-scoring affair tonight. <laughs> Not a night for the hitters, but, man, oh, man, does he wait and just let his hands do the talking. Stayed back on that pitch. A rocket. He is having some kind of postseason. His first postseason. That is his seventh hit already. In 12 at bats and his first home run. Gonzalez singled and scored in the first and hits a game tying home run here in the fourth inning. One and two to Fowler. A little bouncer. Blanton makes the play himself. And the inning is over. But Carlos Gonzalez against his teammate from a year ago in Oakland, Joe Blanton, ties this game at four as we head to the fifth.
score. As we head to the fifth inning, Matt Belisle stays on to pitch. Actually got a postseason at bat, his first of his career, and he grounded out in the fourth. No balls, two strikes on Jimmy Rollins. The Phillies will have the top of the order here in the fifth inning. Rollins, Victorino, and Udley. Phillies able to capitalize on a leadoff walk last inning that led to eight hitters coming to the plate. Bell Isle's task handed to him. Now that he's pinch hit, or rather that he's hit for himself and stayed in the game is just try to hold the Phillies right where they are. Both starters chased early here tonight. Jay Happ goes three innings for Philadelphia. Jason Hamill three and two thirds. And neither will factor in the decision as Rollins pulls one foul. Rollins is 0 for 2. He's now 2 for 11 in this NLDS. Rollins has had one hit in each of the first two games. Jimmy's had a tough year, but he's had a better last third of the season than he had the first two thirds. And if the Phillies really want to repeat as world champions, they need to get him on board and get him going. They chased one out in front. Belial took something off. And he strikes out Jimmy Rollins for the first out of the fifth. Excellent off-speed pitch there. And Rollins out on his front foot. Couldn't stay back. Well, if you're new to watching baseball from Coors Field in Denver, it used to be you'd have a tough time throwing breaking balls here. We're a, a mile high, and curveballs seem to roll. But we've seen good curveballs tonight, not just from Belial, but Jason Hamill spun off a couple of dandies as well. Pitchers used to complain about the baseballs because of the altitude being too hard and slick. But not anymore, not as, a few years, as of a few years ago when they started storing the balls differently. Good. Installed a humidor under the stadium back at 02. And it's made a big difference. Home run numbers down. Still a great offensive ballpark, Coors Field. Mm -hmm. As proven here again tonight. Eight runs, ten hits combined already. Victorino is the man who got it all started in the fourth. Got a leadoff walk and a three-run, three-hit inning for Philadelphia. They had three hits and three walks in that fourth. Victorino breaks his bat as the count evens at 2-2. The choices a manager has to make when you come to Coors Field is do you bunch your outfielders and try to take away some of those deep gaps and give up the lines? You can do that, but... You can easily hit a triple down either line in this ballpark, too, if your outfielders, if your corner outfielders are too far off the line. There's just so much ground to cover. It's a huge outfield. Got a lazy pop up into the right. Ryan Spielborgs makes a catch for out number two. So Belial has come on and retired three straight. He got out of the jam in the fourth. And now two up, two down here in the fifth inning. Chase Utley's gotten a couple of pitches tonight right in his wheelhouse. Hit one into the Phillies bullpen and solid single his last time up. Utley now 4 for 10 in the series. His first RBIs when he homered in the first. He scored twice on his two hits tonight. A 
Hudley had off-season hip surgery. Came back, had another big year, although a sub-100 RBI season for Chase Hudley. He drove in 93, but it snapped four consecutive years of driving at 100 runs or more. Missed low and then tried to come down in it with a breaking ball and tie him up a little bit, but he didn't even think about swinging at that one. He wants the ball down, but he wants it out over the plate just a little bit so he can extend his arms. He's got one of the shortest swings in baseball. And one of the few guys anymore that still keeps both hands on the bat with a full swing. It was a 400-foot-plus homer in the first inning. They had a quick strike for the Phillies. A two-out first-inning home run for Udley. His third career postseason home run. And Delisle has fallen behind him 3-0 with a dangerous Ryan Howard on deck. Can't assume he'll be taking here. Got to make a good pitch. Phillies maybe more than any other team in the league free swinging in 3-0 counts. And Udley takes a hack and fouls it away. Good success against this pitcher. Four hits, two of them homers, the other two doubles. Three balls and a strike on Udley. And that one missed. Ball four. Udley draws the walk. And Ryan Howard will step in. And here is today's language of the game brought to you by Foster's. Today we focus on slugging percentage. Slugging percentage is calculated by dividing total number of bases of all hits by the total times at bat. And it's a good indication of the power numbers. Albert Pujols, Prince Fielder, Derek Lee, Ryan Howard. Some of the best power hitters in the National League on this list. So Belial retires the first two. He walks Udley. And Jim Tracy's going to make a change here with the left-hander Howard coming up. It's the left-hander Bible coming in. We'll take a timeout. The four and the Rockies and the Phillies will at least go to a game four tomorrow. If necessary, game five will be Tuesday in Philadelphia. Joe Bimel on the pitch in a tie game with two outs and a runner at first. He'll face Ryan Howard. Combined numbers there with the Nationals and with Colorado. Pretty good ERA. A lot of walks, but he is a situational guy. Brought in primarily to get lefties out because he's got a very awkward delivery. Steps 
little bit toward the first baseline, throws across his body. Sometimes hard to pick up. Bimel making his second appearance in this series, and Howard swings away at the first pitch. To Lewitsky over the shoulder, makes the catch for the out. Troy Tulowitzki ranging into the outfield grass. The inning is over. We head to the bottom of the fifth, middle of the order, coming up for the Rockies. The Rockies will have the middle of their order coming up as Todd Helton leads off. Joe Blanton still on the mound for the Phillies. Blanton gave up the home run to Gonzalez that tied it in the fourth inning. Now his second inning of work. Helton to Lewitsky and Yorvi Torrealba. Typical Todd Helton night on base twice. Make it three times. Helton with a base hit. That's his first hit of the game. Had a fielder's choice and an RBI in the first. He walked and scored in the third, and now he's aboard to start the fifth. Third in the National League and on base percentage with a 416 mark. Pitch that didn't even look like a strike. Hit it off the end of the bat a little bit, but he gets the inning started the right way. He's been an amazing hitter. Troy Tulowitzki now with Helton at first base. And Tulowitzki jumping on the first pitch. Well, he never gets cheated, does he? Now standing tall in that batter's box. Tulowitzki had been crouched down 
last year. And uh, even during his terrific rookie season of 07, just kept getting lower and lower. Jim Tracy wanted him to stand up tall and asked Don Bailey, the hitting coach, to get some height back. There's a 6 4 3 double play. Nicely turned at the Keystone for the Phillies. Two outs with one swing of the bat for Joe Blinn. It's kind of a routine double play and a good turn by Utley. But for a big guy, boy, Troy Tulowitzki is quick, gets down the line in a hurry, and they just barely got him for the double play. Mm. Utley, a nice pivot. And that was the only way the Phillies were going to get Tulowitzki, who runs well. So two outs, and here is Tori Alba. And you're wondering if Tori Alba is feeling the pressure of batting fifth. You know, that <laughs> yeah. is a run-producing spot, and it's not a spot that uh, you can hide, if you will. He has struck out twice in this game, and a little soft pop-up to right. And Tori Alba is 0-4-3, a seven-pitch inning for Joe Blanton in a scoreless frame in the fifth. Tied at four, we head to inning number six in Denver. The Phillies and the Rockies, and Colorado has a new pitcher on the mound. Jose Contreras, 37 years of age, and now pitching out of the bullpen for the Colorado Rockies in this postseason. The record in ERA don't reflect how well he pitched for Colorado. Throws hard, good fastball, good split-finger pitch. Contreras started the year in the American League with the White Sox, 5-13 and 13 with Chicago. Traded to the Rockies and pitched mostly out of the bullpen with Colorado. He made seven appearances during the regular year, had a 1.59 earned run average, but only two starts. He was in that starting rotation, but he was covering first on a cool night here a few weeks back. 
and uh, tweaked his, his quad muscle in his leg. And when he came back, they were so close to the postseason, Jim Tracy put him in the bullpen, and that's where he stays for round one. Well, he's 93-94 with a fastball, but you got to throw it over the plate, and he's fallen behind 3-0. and Jason Wirth leads off for Philadelphia. The Phillies had the early lead tonight on a Chase Utley home run. The Rockies quickly went ahead in the bottom of the first with two of their own. Added one in the third. It was 3-1 to one before the Phillies scored three runs in the fourth. Rockies tied it in the bottom of the fourth. How about that 3-1 slider? Like his third best pitch. Full count to Worth. Got him. What a comeback. Fastball down 3-0. He comes all the way back to strike out Jason Worth. That had a lot of late movement, too, down and in. Watch this one. Target was down and in, and that's where he delivered it, right to Torrey Alba. Tough pitch to lay off when it's coming back to you and looked like it came back in off the plate, and Worth still went after it. Good pitch. And Colorado pitching has now punched out seven Phillies here tonight. Seven strikeouts through the first, five and a third. Boy, Banez has great numbers against Contreras. All of that coming in the American League. Sorry to say about the numbers that Utley had against Belle Isle and how good they were, that typically when you see a guy with those kind of numbers, the hitter will tell you, I just see the ball out of his hand. I pick it up quickly. It's not that their stuff is any less than someone else's, but you just see the ball good out of their hand. A lot of the fans in the ballpark wanted that one, but another good call by Jerry Meals. He's been sharp tonight. Two balls and a strike on Raul Ibanez. Ibanez picked up his fifth RBI of this NLDS. He walked with the bases loaded in the fourth. Philly's getting everything and more than they expected from Ibanez. He has four hits in this series and five runs batted in in two and a half games. Another good at bat by Ibanez. Remember last inning, or excuse me, in the fourth inning, what a good at bat he had after falling behind Hamill and working him for a bases loaded walk. And another walk. Ibanez taking some close pitches, but draws his second walk, and the Phillies. With a base runner with one out in the sixth. The bases loaded walk was a 3-2 breaking ball that he didn't swing at. That was ball four, obviously. And that one they tried a, a backdoor breaking ball to the other side of the plate, and he didn't even blink at that one. Good eye. One out runner at first for Pedro Feliz. As Contreras looks for a double play ball in this situation. Been two double plays turned in this game. The Rockies turned a big one in the fourth. A 1-2-3 double play. Pitcher to catcher to first. And without that double play in the fourth inning, the uh, big inning could have been even bigger yeah. for the Philadelphia Phillies. They had the bases loaded and nobody out in that fourth inning. And two runs already in. Even if it's a double play up the middle, it still produces another run. Fifteen pitches in this inning for Contreras. Ten of them outside the strike zone. 
and missing a lot with the slider. And that's ball four. Walks Pedro Feliz, a man who doesn't walk that often. Walks him on four straight. And the Phillies with two on with one out. That was a little bit of a reaction from Torrey Alba, I think, on that pitch. He, he had his mask up on his helmet right away after ball four was issued. I don't know if he was upset with the call or if he thought the strike zone had gotten too small. But it's like maybe he had an argument as he turned around to Meals and immediately had the mask up. Hey, Jerry's had a good night, though, behind the plate. Jerry Meals breaks up the meeting at the mound. Bob Apodaca, the Rockies pitching coach. Contreras has fired strict, uh, six straight pitches out of the strike zone. 11 balls, five strikes in this inning. And after he came back from being down 3-0 and on word to strike him out, he's walked the last two hitters. As he faces Carlos Ruiz. Ruiz driving in his second run of the series. An RBI single in the fourth. That was the third and final run of that fourth inning. Gave the Phillies a 4-3 lead as Ruiz takes strike one. Just like we said in the fourth inning, Brian, when you give the Phillies free base runners like the leadoff walk to Victorino that got that inning started. You're just asking for trouble. They hit enough without putting guys on base. Six walks issued by Rockies pitching at this point. Yeah, and while we don't know what's going to happen this inning, to have issued six walks and be tied is pretty good. You're, you've been making some good pitches to limit the damage. Now Contreras falling behind Ruiz. And no one in their bullpen. See what the Phillies have done tonight with runners in scoring position and They've done a good job in that category in the series overall. Two balls and a strike. Runners at first and second. Ruiz, a bouncer, a hot one. It gets through. Ibanez around third, and he's on his way to the plate to score. As Carlos Ruiz drives in another run. His second RBI of the game. The Phillies have a 5-4 lead. Right back through the middle after getting ahead in the count. He got a pitch he could handle that was in the middle of the plate, more or less. Hit it right back through the middle. Talked about how much he liked to pull the ball. This time it goes back through the box for the RBI and drives in one of those walks. Boy, the catchers in this series are coming up with some big hits. Torrey Alba in game two. Carlos Ruiz in game one. And now here in game three, Ruiz... With two hits and two runs batted in, Ibanez scores. The one-out walk comes in, and the Phillies on top by a run. Now, this would be a bunt situation for Blanton, and might well be, but remember, he had a home run in the World Series last year. Sam Perlazzo is going to go over what they want him to do face to face. Now, well, speaking of that home run, World Series last year, Joe Blanton, the first pitcher in 34 years to hit a home run in the World Series. His first career home run came in the fifth inning off Edwin Jackson. And he got the win on the mound as well. Blanton was the winner in the division series last year in Milwaukee. He won game four, the clincher for the Phillies to advance in the postseason. It was a good pickup for the Phillies last year, a trade that sent Blanton to Philadelphia from Oakland. Yeah, went undefeated in the regular season with him after they got him. 
Let's see if he's still bunting with two strikes. He squares early, and he takes a ball. That home run he hit last year, just the 15th hit by a pitcher in a World Series. And the first since 1974 to do it. Well, he cannot get the bunt down. So a big out. Blend unable to advance the runners. And Contreras is an out away from getting out of this inning. There was the splitter. Finally saw the splitter from Contreras, and it was a beauty. Couldn't even bunt it. Had his weight a little bit on his heels, too, and then couldn't reach it. Top of the order, here's Jimmy Rollins. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts tonight. We got runners at first and second. Feliz at second. Ruiz at first. And a pickoff at second base. Close play, but Feliz back in time. Good timing play here, daylight play with Tulowitzki cutting in behind Feliz. As soon as Contreras sees some daylight between Tulowitzki and the runner, he turns and fires, and it was a close play. You know, it's almost impossible to throw out a runner at the plate here at Coors Field on a base hit with a runner at second. It has to be a hot shot for sure. Outfielders very deep. Feliz... Has decent speed. And even though the Colorado outfielders all have good arms. Yeah, they do. Feliz will be off on the crack of the bat with two outs. Jimmy Rollins is a good fastball hitter. He likes the fastball. He's up on top of the plate inviting you to pitch him in. Contreras has got to be careful with his location here. Hitters count for Rollins. Contreras last worked out of the bullpen in the postseason when he was a member of the Yankees. That was back in that 03 World Series team in New York. That one misses badly. Three and one to Rollins. And another high pitch inning for a Colorado hurler. This is number 28 on the way for Contreras. That was a split finger pitch that got away from him. Slipped out of his hand. Rollins. Out to Barmas. To second for the out. Inning over. But Philadelphia scores, and they have the lead once again. 5-4 Phillies on our way to the bottom of the sixth.
Blanton. Every time the Phillies have scored tonight, the Rockies have answered. We'll see if they do it here in the sixth. Atkins, Spielborgs, and Barmas. Three right-handed batters against Blanton, who's coming off a seven-pitch fifth inning. He did allow a single, but immediately got a double play ball. And again, his turn in the order came up in a bunt situation, so Charlie Manuel was allowed to had the liberty of leaving him in there to bunt, even though he didn't get it down. It keeps Blanton in the game and gives him some extra innings. Former first rounder back in the 0-2 draft out of the University of Kentucky from Brownsville, Kentucky. Atkins lines out into left, and Ibanez runs it down. Ibanez playing very deep in left field and able to cut the corner and take extra bases away from Garrett Atkins. Tell you what, Atkins has smoked a couple of balls tonight, got one down and in. Just pulled one foul that had home run distance, but Ibanez got a good jump on that one. Good play. Can't hit one much harder. I think Garrett Atkins has heard enough talk about his down season at 09. He's driven in a pair tonight. Hits that one hard. But Ibanez takes a double away from him. And now it's Spielborgs. Spielborg's a terrific athlete. Can play all over, play the infield. He can play all three outfield spots. He was the regular center fielder back in 07. Tonight gets the start and right. We are in the sixth inning at Coors Field in Denver. Game three of this best of five in LDS. The Phillies have just taken the lead. They scored a run in the sixth inning on an RBI single from Carlos Ruiz. Brian Anderson, Joe Simpson, David Aldridge, and our great crew here at TBS. We're glad you're with us tonight. Spielborg's off the end of the bat, a base hit. So Ryan Spielborg's a one-out single. And the Rockies have a man on for Clint Barmas. A little too good a pitch here, one and two. Made a mistake out over the plate, and Spielborgs did a good piece of, made a good piece of hitting here by knocking it back through the middle. I'm sure Blanton's glad he didn't get his bare hand on that. Mm. Now that forces Charlie Manuel to get his bullpen active once again. Clint Barmas, Colorado second baseman with one away. And he gets ahead of him. Scott Ayer beginning to stir in the Philadelphia bullpen. But the pitcher spot coming up next. And Jim Tracy has already sent Seth Smith to the on-deck circle, one of their best pinch hitters this year. Yeah, they've got a ton of lefties on their bench right now. And so any one of them that Jim Tracy might go to, Charlie Manuel wants to be ready by having Scott Ayer ready. And yes, Jason Jambi is among those. He is the late pinch hitter, the big money pinch hitter for the Colorado Rockies. Good break there by or for Ruiz. That ball went off the web of his glove and hit his shin guard. Didn't get past him. Now Ruiz, such a good catcher defensively controls the running game calls pitches well and the offense you get is a bonus and he's offered a couple of big bonus hits here tonight Ruiz with two RBIs on two hits he's driven in the last two Philadelphia runs had an RBI single earlier in this series as well Bland induced a double play from Tulowitzki last inning. As Barma sends one to center field, Victorino is back, and he makes the catch. 
Spielborgs has to retreat. It's kind of an awkward-looking catch by Victorino, but he hauls it in for out number two nonetheless. Very awkward in that he never really turned his back on the ball. He was tracking it the whole way, but having to run kind of sideways in the process. And then the ball almost got over him. So it may have carried a lot farther than he expected it to. Seth Smith is announced as a pinch hitter, and here comes Manuel. And that'll be Blanton's last hitter. So Joe Blanton gives the Phillies two and two-thirds. At this point, he's given up one run. Some big outs for Charlie Manuel here tonight. And the skipper takes the ball, and he makes the call for Scott Ayer. So a lefty on the lefty matchup coming. We'll take a timeout from Denver. Stay with us. nine postseason put the Phillies on top but the Rockies come right back scored two in the first Garrett Atkins had an RBI single Carlos Ruiz drove in a run in the fourth that capped off a three run Philadelphia inning that gave the Phillies a four to three lead but then Gonzalez tied it up a long home run to right and it was even at four until Ruiz came to bat once again with a runner in scoring position and delivered a one-out single for Ruiz, scoring Ibanez, and that's where we sit as we play in the Colorado half of the sixth inning. Scott Ayer on the mound for the Phillies to face the left-hander Seth Smith, the announced pinch hitter. Scott Ayer's got some unbelievable numbers. I mean, not to mention that 1.50 ERA. That, that speaks for itself. But on the road, it's it's even better. For the season on the road, his ERA was below one. 0 0.55. Lefties hit just 210 against him. Well, if you weren't with us earlier in the series, Scott Ayer pitching with loose chips in his elbow. Floating bodies, they say, in that pitching elbow. And... Sometimes he wakes up, he can't straighten out his elbow. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to pitch day to day, but the two times that Manuel has called on him, he's been ready. As Ayer takes the ball to face Seth Smith with two outs here in the sixth inning. Ayer was impressive on Thursday in game two. Retired the side... With a strikeout, did give up a sacrifice fly in that inning, but pitched out of a mess for Philadelphia, coming in with men on base. Yeah, I think bases were loaded, nobody out, and mm -hmm. he gave up one run. Yeah, just the sack fly to Dexter Fowler. But it was the run that put the Rockies on top for good. Well, you mentioned how good this guy's been as a pinch hitter, 472. That's pretty good. And since 1974, sixth best average in the National League, that number this year. Mm. He's one of the guys, he's one of the lefties that the Rockies would fire in the lineup right away. 
if a right-handed starter ever takes the mound for Philadelphia. 472 hitter as a pinch hitter this year. Two outs and a runner at first. Get a 5-4 Philadelphia lead as air misses badly with a fastball. From Jackson, Mississippi. He was the backup quarterback to Eli Manning at Ole Miss. Got a second rounder. Made the right choice. So he and Todd Helton have something in common, don't they? <laughs> yeah, the two teammates. They both backed up Mannings in college. And Smith pops it in foul territory. And the side retired. Scott Ayer comes in, does another good job for Charlie Manuel. Ibanya has a nice play in left. Running one down, Victorino, a nice play in center field. And the Phillies hang on to their 5-4 lead as we head to the seventh. Once again, boy, these two teams have matched up well. First three games of this best of five series. The Phillies won the opener behind Cliff Lee. It was five to one the final as Lee beat Jimenez. And the Rockies won game two in Philadelphia five to four. So we head to the seventh. Franklin Morales, hard throwing left hander, on to pitch for Jim Tracy. He's pitched in each of the first two games coming into tonight. And retired everybody he faced, including getting a double play in one. Morales, just 23 years of age from Venezuela. And he pitched in the postseason in 07 for Colorado. He was a starter back then as a 21-year-old. Matter of fact, he started a game against the Phillies in the division series. That was a three-game sweep for the Rockies against Philadelphia. He's got a live arm, low 90s fastball. 92 93 is probably the top end for him. He also has a good cutter. He'll fire that in on right handed hitters as well as a slider. Pulled the string on Victorino. 
And gets ahead of the switch hitter 0 and 2. And as you just saw has a good change up that has some good sinking action to it. Victorino walked and scored in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. Victorino, Utley, and Ryan Howard. Little bouncer over the mound. Tulowitzki ranging over, fires to first, and it's dug out by Helton. A great play on both ends. Tulowitzki to Helton, and one gone in the seventh. Again, the big man at short's got quite a range and a good arm wide of the mark, but Helton digs it out again. And you're right, Brian, good play on both ends to get a fast runner. That's a tricky throw. Helton always with the impeccable footwork, able to keep his foot on the bag and pick the short hop. Otherwise, Victorino is going to be standing in scoring position with nobody out. That's the kind of play you expect to see from the athletic shortstops that you think are more like Jimmy Rollins, you know, smaller, quicker, faster, but Tulowitzki makes it look easy. Udley sends one to left. Carlos Gonzalez makes a catch. Two up, two down for Franklin Morales. Here's that play at first. Again, wide of the bag. Helton had already stretched for it, so the throw was a little bit to his side, but he still made the play and kept his foot on the bag. One of the reasons why the Rockies, one of the better defensive clubs in baseball. Helton, not only is he good around the bag, he's only committed three errors all season at first base, and he saves a number of errors from this Colorado infield throughout the year. Two up, two down. Here's Ryan Howard with nobody on. Philadelphia leading 5-4 to four in the seventh inning. Howard's had a good series. He drove in a run in the fourth. He was part of that three-run fourth inning for the Philadelphia Phillies. Gives him three RBIs now. Has five hits in the series. And he hits that one into center field. Easy play for Fowler. Franklin Morales, a six-pitch inning, three up, three down. The middle of the Phillies order, go in order.
Phillies lead the Rockies 5-4 to four in a series that is all tied at one game apiece. Phillies have done their damage on only five hits, Brian, thanks to all those walks. Three walks have scored tonight for Philadelphia. Three other five runs. Six walks total for the Phillies. As the Rockies have used five pitchers now. Well, they're having some fun in Denver. And a great sports day on this Sunday here in the Mile High City. Carlos Gonzalez set to lead off this seventh inning. Seven hits already. Dante Bichette has the Rockies record back in 95. Ball club that was managed by Don Baylor, the first wild card entrant in the National League. And Gonzalez well on his way. Having a great series, hitting the ball everywhere and with power as we saw his last time up. A launch job into the right field seats. They got him from Oakland in the deal that sent Matt Holiday over there. He came over along with Houston Street. And wearing Matt Holiday's number five. He came to the big leagues for Colorado this year right about the time Jim Tracy took over. And where Tracy was protecting him a little bit in the batting order, he was hitting down in the order, playing three or four days out of the week. Gonzalez quickly proved he was an everyday player for the Colorado Rockies. And he is back in the leadoff spot for the second consecutive game. Has two hits tonight. Ready to go here in the home seventh. Scott Ayer back on the mound against the left-handed hitting Gonzalez. With the switch hitter coming up next, then the lefty Todd Helton after that. So this looks to be Ayer's inning once again. And this would be a what would be considered a long stint for him to carry over from one inning to the next and pitch a complete inning if he can finish this one. Air got the final out of the sixth. Retired Seth Smith with a runner at first and two outs. That last pitch, Ruiz had a high target. Let's see if he tries that again. Gonzalez, a deadly low ball hitter. And Ruiz... Wants one upstairs, it misses down, and Gonzalez sends one to the gap. That's going to go to the wall. Gonzalez around second will stop with a double. My goodness, what a swing. Scott Ayer doesn't give up anything to left-handed hitters. Made a good pitch, what appeared to be a good pitch. Target down and away. Pitch delivered down and away. And he just creams it this time to left center field. Head down on the ball, hands back, and an explosive swing down and through the ball. Carlos Gonzalez with his eighth hit already in this series. And how about his spray chart tonight? His first hit was a single back up the middle. He pulled one for a home run in the fourth and now drives one to the opposite field gap. Three hits again tonight. Six hits in the last two games as the Rockies' leadoff hitter. And now Scott Ayer in trouble with a runner in scoring position. One thing about Gonzalez, he has great speed, but he tweaked his hamstring second to last week of the season. Otherwise, he's probably standing on third base. He's not running like he normally does. Well, let's see if Dexter Fowler is going to bunt him over. He was able to move him up. In Philadelphia in game two to set the stage for their first run of the game. And if he does get the ball down, you can't fiddle around with what you're going to do with it. You either have to try to cut down the lead runner or go to first right away because of the way Fowler can run.
Fowler tonight is one for three. Squares early and air checks on the runner at second. A called play from the Philadelphia dugout just to see if Fowler would show his hand and he did. Well, if he's going to swing away, you want him to hit it to the right side to get the runner over. But if he's going to bunt, you'd like to see him bunt it to Feliz and make him field it. There's a bunt. And it's going to get past Ayer, who is injured. Scott Ayer down in a heap as he tried to break toward that baseball. It's going to go as an infield hit for Fowler. But Scott Ayer is hurting on the mound. I think he tried to plant and go to the bunt, and his ankle rolled on him. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He started to stop and go to the baseball. He was headed to the third base line, but right here, it rolled on him. You watch the right ankle right there. And down he goes, and an infield hit for Dexter Fowler. And Charlie Manuel will take no chances with Scott Ayer, even with a left-hander Todd Helton coming up. For the second time in this series, Charlie Manuel has to go get a relief pitcher because of an injury. And they're trying to figure out who it is that he wants. We will take a break. The reliever will have as much time as he needs to get loose. Stay with us. schedule coming up. We're back on the air tomorrow, 5.30 Eastern with Ernie Johnson in the studio. That'll be game four of this best of five series. Whoever wins tonight will have a chance to end the series tomorrow. If game five is necessary, it's right back to Philadelphia for a 7.30 start time. And Joe, it's a situation where the Rockies have two on. You've got a pitcher, Ryan Matson, who hasn't thrown a single pitch in the bullpen. Obviously, he'll get as much time as he needs, but he gets to warm up in front of 50,000. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> nice treat for him, but he needs a ground ball, and I think that's what Charlie Manuel's hoping for here, if not a strikeout and then a ground ball to try to get out of this inning. But madsen has been a setup guy for him all year for Brad Lidge, and he's hoping to get some quick outs here and at the very least hold it to a one-run inning to tie the ball game. He's got a great changeup, throws hard, sinking action on his fastball, but an excellent changeup. But he's got his work cut out for him against Todd Helton, who's been on base three times tonight. Well, because Helton is a left-hander, as Charlie Manuel starts to get late into his bullpen, his best option against a left-hander, as far as right-handed pitchers goes, is Matson with his great changeup. That's his best pitch. Well, tonight the Rockies are two for six. One of those hits, though, just took place, that bunt single by Dexter Fowler. But their numbers with runners in scoring position pale in comparison to Philadelphia, who the Phillies have been very clutch. 
Philadelphia has made the most of their five hits here tonight. The Rockies have actually doubled up the Phillies in the hit column, yet they trail by a run. Two hits in this inning for Colorado. Gonzalez doubled to start the inning. Fowler a bunt single. Scott Ayer rolls his ankle as he tries to make a play on the ball. And Ayer had to be taken out of the ball game. Second time in as many games, Charlie Manuel has had to re- remove a reliever because of an injury. It happened to Jay Happ on Thursday. Happ was hit by Seth Smith line drive and had to leave the game. Made the start tonight, but this is the play that sent Scott Ayer to the training table. Right here, right there, he tried to plant and go after the bunt. And his ankle just rolled on him. Turned into a bunt base hit for Fowler as a result. Yeah, we hope the best for Scott Ayer. Certainly x-rays will be coming. And uh, we hope he's going to be all right for the remainder of this series. He was able to walk off under his own power, but it's not tonight. It's probably tomorrow that you worry about it and whether or not there's any swelling that develops. And the Phillies will take all the measures they can to keep that from happening. But this is a tough spot right here for Madsen because this guy, Todd Helton, is the guy that's going to be hitting with runners at the corners. And he's going to warm his bat up a little bit before he goes up there. Remember, he got jammed his first time up and was in pain at first base when he hit a little dribbler to second. Notice he didn't warm up the action end of the bat. No. He warmed up the (laughs) handle of the bat where his hands are. (laughs) And looking at that, you'd say, well, he's mostly a pull hitter, and perhaps he is, but he can hit the ball with authority to all parts of the field. (laughs) No, he has had a great career, Todd Helton, and it was a career that looked to be in jeopardy last year at this time. He had wrapped up his season. He had a bad back, required back surgery, but Helton had a successful back surgery, and He's been able to play just about every day in 2009, and he's put up big numbers once again. Todd Helton will bat with two on and nobody out. And for more on Todd Helton, we check in with David Aldridge. David? David, thank you. Todd Helton, the great thinker that he is, <laughs> steps up in a big spot and 50,000 going nuts here at Coors Field. Well, Madsen got all the time he wanted. He knew who was going to be the first batter he had to face, so he might have thrown a few extra pitches trying to think about that to try to get a ground ball here. First and third, nobody out. Tying run is at third for the Rockies. Fowler, a base stealer at first. Helton has a hit tonight. He's one for two. Been on base all three times. And Matson making sure Dexter Fowler not running on first movement. I'm not sure that you'll see Dexter run here. He might run if Tulowitzki comes to the plate, but I don't know if you want to take the bat out of Helton's hand here. If he does steal, they might pitch around Helton. Boy, Helton had a good cut. He had a Helton of a cut. And Matson's first pitch is 94 miles an hour. Fielder's choice and an RBI for Helton in the first inning. That tied the game quickly for the Rockies. And then Helton scored what would be the go-ahead run in the first inning. He walked and scored in the third and singled in the fifth. It has been a Philadelphia bullpen that has been in the crosshairs all year. 
Matson sharing closing duties this season with Brad Lidge. And in the game a lot earlier than Charlie Manuel had hoped. That was the changeup, and that might be part of what's going on here with this defensive alignment. A lot of room here between Ibanez and Victorino in that Ibanez is playing close to the line and left in the event that he hits one to left on that changeup down and away. Two and two to Helton. Last pitch at 90. And he was under it, just like he was the first one that he foul tipped. Best arm of the outfield is in right. Jason Worth. Gonzalez has good speed at third, but slowed by a tweak of a hamstring as Helton fights one off. Boy, staying with the fastball is Madsen. And so far, Helton hasn't gotten around on him. Strikeout here would be huge. That's a high number. First batter faced 338 batting average to the first man of the game, especially for a reliever who usually comes in with men on base. Nobody out. Tying run at third. And as Helton spoils one. Just and that's got a piece. And that's why they've got Ibanez playing where he is for that type of pitch knowing that Helton's capable of just flaring that to left field and they've got Ibanez somewhat shallow and near the line but an excellent changeup spoiled that's why Matson is so tough on left handed hitters the 2-2 Helton strikes out as Matson goes up the ladder his best fastball of the night and it gets him a big strikeout here in the seventh inning. Three pitches that he swung and missed at that were all up out of the zone. But he got a good look at him, and he couldn't lay off, and he couldn't get on top of any of the three. It's a beautiful piece of pitching. By Ryan Matson setting him up with a changeup down and away. Comes back with a high fastball. And Helton, who does not strike out very often, strikes out with runners at first and third. Tulowitzki hit into a double play as last time up. Phillies are hoping for more of the same. But now let's see if Fowler's running. T. Lewitsky, the Rockies' best power hitter. 31 home runs during the regular year. Another high fastball. The Rockies cannot lay off, and Matson gets ahead. It was 95. Matson with that big strikeout stuff. That's why he's in the game. Even though Charlie Manuel had Chad Durbin warming up in the bullpen, after the injury to air, he goes with Matson. Madsen can be a bit slow to the plate, Brian, and a little lumbery. He's big, tall, drink of water, a little lumbery to the plate, and Fowler, with any kind of jump at all, could swipe second on him. Fowler had 27 steals during the regular year, but he was caught 10 times. And Madsen keeps him close. It's probably his best move to first right there. So Fowler knows he can get an extra step. Jim Tracy talked about his first two hitters being comparable to what they do for the Rockies, to Rollins and Victorino and what they do for the Phillies. And if that's the case, he might be sending Fowler. Fowler stays put to Lewitsky. 
fouls one away as Matson got another one in on his hands. Man, is he making some good pitches. In what might be the, the situation of the game defensively for the Phillies, protecting a one-run lead. Some great pitches to Helton to strike him out, and he's kept two pitches up and in on Tulowitzki that he could only fight off. The power sinker from Matson. And now he's ahead 0-2 and doesn't have to throw him a strike. Tulowitzki swung at a couple that were out of the zone. Maybe he'll swing at another. Ian Tide almost hit him. Well, he didn't want to do that. Tulowitzki was hit by a pitch in game two on Thursday. The target. They wanted the pitch up. Mm. They certainly didn't want to hit him. And Ruiz wasn't even sure he caught that ball. Up and in, up and in, up and in. Fowler's still standing at first. See if they go away. Ruiz jumps out there. Tulowitzki hits one to the left. Ibanez will make the catch. This will be plenty deep to score the run as Gonzalez comes in to score. And we're tied once again. He made a mistake with a pitch that was supposed to be down and away, Brian. But in a way, he got away with it. Because look where this pitch was. Right in the middle of the plate coming back to Troy. And in some respects, Madsen's fortunate this ball stayed in the ballpark and only drove in one run. The Rockies, who led the major leagues in sacrifice flies this year, Come up with their third in the last two games as Tulowitzki ties it up. Now two outs. Fowler still at first for your Vitori Alba. Well, you're right, Joe. That missed by a fraction of an inch on the bat from being a three-run home run for Tulowitzki. When he first hit it, I thought it was out of here. But just under it, the ball's not carrying as well as a normal night at Coors Field. Even though we've had a couple of homers hit tonight. This shows, though, there's such a fine line. Madsen's made so many good pitches this inning, and then he made one mistake that almost cost him big time. On a two-strike pitch as Tori Alba takes one down and in. Here was that one-two count. Missed it by that much. Yeah. But Tulowitzki drives in his second run of this series. It was about a 95 mile an hour pickoff <laughs> throw. Tori Alba is 0 for 3 tonight. Fowler stays put. And a changeup from Matson has Torrealba out in front. One ball, one strike on the Rockies catcher. Goes from 95 with his fastball to low 80s on the changeup. It's a great changeup speed-wise because the arm action stays the same and the hitters have a hard time picking it up. But just great drastic difference in the speed. Matson had more strikeouts than innings pitched this year. 78 Ks and 77 innings. He did save 10 games for the Phillies this season. In game one of the series with Cliff Lee looking strong and going the distance when he did run into a bit of trouble in the ninth. It was not Lidge who was up. It was Matson. In case it got to a save situation. Matson here in the seventh. Two and one on Torrealba. 
Madsen throws across his body in a drastic fashion, too. Steps toward the third baseline, and that does create some movement on his fastball. Creates some sinking action. Makes him hard to pick up, too, for a right-handed hitter. Well, a good count to run on for the Rockies. Fowler has been pinned to first base since he reached on that bunt single with nobody out. Yeah, I'm surprised he's still there. This is an ideal hit and run count, two balls and a strike. Fowler takes off. Tori Alba fouls it away. And the count evens at two and two. Dexter Fowler is a long strider. You can see his long legs, but he also has a very quick first step and burst. And those stolen base numbers are only going to get higher the more he plays. That's not a bad number, 73%, especially no. for a rookie. All right, just learning pitchers for the first time. Now see if he's on a move here. Two balls, two strikes. He stays put. Torrey Alba takes strike three. The inning is over. The Rockies score a run to tie it. They had two on with nobody out in the middle of the order coming up. At 10, 9 Central, only on TNT. Beautiful downtown Denver. And uh, this ballpark has completely changed the look of this downtown. Ballpark that opened in 1995, the first playoff year for the Colorado Rockies. This is their third appearance of the postseason, the second in the last three years. And a crowd of over 50,000. 
enjoying every minute of this one. All tied at five. Tulowitzki sacrifice fly evens the score. And here we go to the eighth inning. And another flamethrower out of that Rockies bullpen. It's Rafael Betancourt. Flamethrower is right. Great stuff. More strikeouts than innings pitched and just a 209 average against him. I tell you, Morales looked great. He only worked an inning, but he's retired every batter he's faced so far in this series. Yeah, Morales, a three up, three down, seventh, retiring Victorino, Utley, and Howard. As Betancourt starts, Jason Worth with strike one. Well, there is a way to the end of this game for the Rockies without having to face Utley and Howard again. If the bullpen can continue as they've done here, those are the guys you're trying to avoid, especially in a late-game situation. The two best run producers for the Phillies. Jason Wirth, Raul Ibanez, and Pedro Feliz in this eighth inning. Fastball slider and change for Betancourt. Fastball, low 90s. And a good slider. Big cut from Worth. Ball and two strikes. Threw that one right by him at 93. Jason working on a, an 11 game postseason hitting streak, but 0 for 2 tonight. That's two home runs and four runs driven in in that 11 game hitting streak. Did walk and score a run. Part of the three-run Philadelphia fourth. Rafael Betancourt coming to the Rockies from the Indians. Part of this bullpen makeover under Jim Tracy. That has given him quite a finishing punch in his bullpen. With guys like Betancourt and Morales and the closer Houston Street. Betancourt goes up the ladder and work down on strikes. That high fastball, tough to lay off, but tough to get a bat on as well. He can pitch up there with his stuff. Again, 93, 94 miles an hour, he can pitch up there and get away with it. That's the ninth strikeout for Colorado pitching. As Raul Ibanez bats with one away. Ibanez drove in a run with a bases loaded walk in the fourth. An RBI the easy way. And he walked and scored his last time up. He's been a very patient hitter in this game. And knowing that, Betancourt gets ahead of him right away with a fastball. And again, the Phillies five runs on only five hits tonight. Six walks for the Phillies have contributed to their five runs. Ibanez has two of them. Three of their five hits came in the fourth inning when they got three runs. Banya's got to see him a lot in the American League when they were both over there. Ibanez with the Mariners and the Royals. Betancourt deceptive in that, yeah, he comes pretty much right over the top, but the ball when it comes out of his glove is pretty much right behind his right ear. Three balls and a strike to Raul Ibanez. Betancourt came to the Rockies in a late season trade. Betancourt acquired by Colorado on July 23rd. Rockies sent a minor league pitcher, Connor Graham, to Cleveland. 
Part of the exodus of many of the Indians who are appearing in the postseason. Colorado has a deep farm system, and to be able to get a guy like this that can solidify your bullpen, work real well as a setup guy for street, that's a good deal. Hitters count for Ibanez. And he lays off, and he walks for the third time. So a one-out walk, and the Phillies put the go-ahead run at first base. Again, in the postseason, a walk is a rally. And especially with this Phillies ball club, it leads to a lot of problems on many occasions. Pedro Feliz now. He was a part of a key moment in this game. Two runs were in for Philadelphia. The bases were loaded. Feliz rolled into a 1-2-3 double play. And although Philadelphia scored three runs in the fourth and took the lead, could have been a huge inning if not for that double play. The Phillies have had three leads in this game, but the Rockies have answered all three times. Good breaking ball to start in there. Put him on his heels a little bit with that big curveball. Had him out in front. Torrey Alba gives it a look. That one's going to be in the seats. And it's 0-2. Nope. Back in the fourth inning with starter Jason Hamill still on the mound and struggling. Gets this 1-2-3 double play to help clean that inning up a little bit for the Colorado Rockies. The Phillies would get an RBI hit from Carlos Ruiz, a two-out RBI single that gave them their fourth run. Owen, two. Don't have to throw him a strike and see if he'll chase one of those sliders. A high fastball hitter is Feliz. As Betancourt checks on Ibanez. But he will chase a breaking ball away from him, especially behind in the count. Rocky set up for a double play. And that one, a little soft liner in the left. That's going to fall, and that's a fair ball, a base hit. Ibanez will stop at third, and it's a double for Pedro Feliz. A little flare double just inside the line. And the Phillies have it burning hot here with runners at second and third and one away. Good recognition by Ibanez right away that this ball was going to drop. He never hesitated when he left first base. Just a little one-hander down the line on a breaking ball. One that he could reach. And again, the walk leads to some danger here for the Rockies. And here comes the best run producer of the night for the Phillies. Carlos Ruiz has two RBI singles in this game. Here's a situation, Brian, with one out and first base open where I think I'd have to force Charlie Manuel's hand on his bullpen if that's been the weak part of your ball club. As we've talked about and other people have talked about with the problems that Brad Lidge has had at the end of games and with the pitcher on deck, Madsen, is to see if, if you walk Ruiz what Charlie Manuel would do. And Ruiz... Has delivered in this spot twice tonight. Had a one-out RBI hit his last time up in the sixth. And then an RBI single in the fourth inning as well. Ruiz with three driven in in this series. He's not the hitter in the lineup with all of this power in the Phillies lineup that you're concerned about when you start a series. He's in there mostly for his defense. But he's been a good hitter in the postseason, and especially... In this NLDS this year. There's a strike right on the corner.
Matt Daly loosening for the Rockies. Sidewinder right-hander. Phillies still have Ben Francisco and Matt Stairs on their bench. Miguel Cairo as well. Ball and a strike. The Phillies have runners at second and third. And Ruiz, a mighty hack. Going right after him. But he was behind in the count in his last base hit. Phillies making the most of their hits with runners on base. That swing alone tells you that Ruiz is Philly feeling pretty good about himself at the plate. He took a big rip at Betancourt. See if they go up the ladder a little bit. Good fastball hitter. Struck him out. Put it right by him. Betancourt back with a fastball. And Ruiz is gone. The second strikeout for Betancourt in this eighth inning. And Madsen has been called back. Breaking ball, then the fastball. Another fastball that was swung on and missed. He swung and missed at three fastballs for the strikeout. And that's his bread and butter, Ruiz. So Charlie Manuel will make the move here. Matt stares to pinch hit. And here comes Jim Tracy to the mound. He does have Matt Daly loosening in the bullpen, but this doesn't look like a pitching change kind of meeting. Not the way he hustled out there. And Betancourt stays. I still have that base open at first. But two outs and Jimmy Rollins on deck. Jimmy Rollins has struggled in the series, has just two hits. One of the best low ball hitters ever right here. Five home runs as a pinch hitter this year. A low batting average, but big production. Likes it down and in. Stairs making his second appearance. He pinch hit on Thursday and drew a walk. Betancourt in a hot spot. Second and third. Two gone. Tie ball game in the eighth inning. Wow, what a pitch on the corner. And again, there was Tori Alba setting up inside and then hopping to the outside corner. Betancourt, a strikeout pitcher. Sometimes you can work stairs away, show him away, and then come up and in on him. Just missed. Count goes into Stairs' favor. What, such a, a big pitch, the 1-1 one, one pitch. You throw a ball, you're behind 2-1. and one. A strike puts you ahead in the count, gives you the advantage. Gives you a chance to dictate the at-bat. Now Stairs in control. Well, he's got first base open, too. That's a luxury he has here if he doesn't want to give in to Matt Stairs. Rollins on deck. Another strike on the outside corner. Everything away. And Stairs was unhappy with the call. See if they go away again. 
Torrealba wants it down. Now Torrealba moving around behind the plate. He's shown this in the first three games. He may even tap the ground. He'll tell you where he wants it. He's trying to get the hitter to buy in. But it's usually just the opposite for Torrealba. He jumped from the inside corner to the outside corner. Well, he has enough confidence in his ability to block the ball in the dirt, too. He just wants to make sure that they don't make a mistake to stairs. And again, he's wanting it low. And it certainly wasn't low. <laughs> so he says he wants a high fastball. Remember, there's a runner at second base. That has the ability to tip off the hitter. Mm -hmm. You just don't know at this point. Right. <laughs> Pitch number seven of the at bat. You can give some signs about in or out on location. It's kind of hard to give a hitter a, a sign based on up and down. Boy, I was mixing it up, though. Full count, two outs. Go ahead, run it third. With runners at second and third. Matter of fact, he strikes out Ruiz and Stairs to end the inning. And they are fired up in that Colorado dugout and in this Coors Field Stadium. Got three punch outs, and then I thought he was going to get punched out in the dugout. <laughs> Here's Chad Durbin now. Remember, Stairs pinch hit for Ryan Madsen. So Durbin is in. 
Garrett Atkins leads off for the Rockies. The numbers for Chad Durbin this year. He appeared in 59 games for Charlie Manuel. Good fastball for Seamer. About 88 to 92. Good over the top curveball and a hard slider. He'll mix in a changeup on occasion too. Atkins has two hits, two RBIs. Drove in a run in the first, had an RBI double in the third. And his last time up, he hit a line drive to left that Ibanez made a nice running catch on and robbed him of extra bases. So he's had a good night at the plate. Yeah, it turned out to be a big play because Spielborg's followed with a base hit. And then Barmas backed Victorino up pretty deep. Atkins first hit of the first, put the Rockies on top two to one. And then in the third inning, he added to the Colorado lead with a double, driving in Todd Helton. His second double of the series. A little bouncer, Feliz. Takes care of Atkins for out number one. Here comes Ryan Spielborgs. Jim Tracy would love nothing more than to see his ball club score a run here and then turn the ball over to Houston Street. It's another good ball game, though, between these two evenly matched teams. Houston Street playing a little catch. Don't know that he's really getting hot just yet. Just getting ready. Spielborgs tonight has a hit. He singled his last time up. His second hit of the series. Hit a sharp line drive in the first inning that went for an out. He's one for three. And a bouncer to third. Feliz takes it on the big hop. Two up and two down for Chad Durbin. Pedro Feliz is one of those guys that doesn't get a lot of attention for his defensive work, but he's sure-handed, makes the plays, very underrated defensively. Rockies need to get somebody on base in front of Carlos Gonzalez, who's a couple of batters away the way he's been swinging the bat. Yeah, he's been their money hitter in the last two games. Gonzalez, two hitters away. Barmas batting in the eighth spot of the order. At the pitcher spot coming up next. And Jason Giambi. Steps into the circle. Up the middle, Rollins takes care of Clint Barmas. Chad Durbin, three big outs in the eight, three ground ball outs. We head to the ninth in Denver, all tied at five.
Tonight, this best of five series, National League Division Series, the Colorado Rockies, the wild card entry, and the Philadelphia Phillies. Brad Hopp in the game in right field. This is going to be a double switch for Jim Tracy. Houston Street, the closer, is on to pitch in a 5-5 game. And Brad Hopp will lead off in the bottom of the ninth inning. So it gives Jim Tracy the option to use Street if it goes into extra innings. Multiple innings here tonight. And the luxury as the home team to put your closer on the mound in the top of the ninth inning in a tie game. He got the save in game two, but he had to pitch out of trouble. He gave up a walk and a base hit in a one-run ball game, and things got a little tense, but Victorino lined out to end the ball game. So we'll see if his command's a little better tonight. Top of the order for Philadelphia. Rollins, Victorino, and Udley. If anybody gets on, Ryan Howard will hit in this ninth. And Ryan Howard hoping for that chance. Rockies tied it in the seventh. Tulowitzki with a sacrifice fly. Scoring Carlos Gonzalez to even the score as Rollins comes up empty once again. It's his A changeup right there. He's not that overpowering. I mean, he still throws in the low 90s, but he, he's not a guy that comes in and blows you away as a closer. He's a guy that relies on his command, an excellent change of pace, and good sinking action on his fastball. Jimmy Rollins is 0 for 4. He is struggling in this NLDS. Rollins 2 for 13 at the plate with four strikeouts. And two of those strikeouts tonight. 2 and 2. Street delivers. And that one misses down and in. Street had a great year. 25 years of age from Austin, Texas. Played his college ball at the University of Texas. And came back strong this year. 35 saves and 37 tries. Jimmy Rollins with a base hit. So Rollins has a hit in each of the first three games of this series. He does it in his fifth turn at the plate. And a big hit it is. Now the Phillies have a man on. Well, and it came on account that he was able to work full and got a better pitch to hit. Something that's out over the plate. He banged it right back through the middle and lead off man aboard. Now the Phillies love to run, especially at the top of their order with Rollins and Victorino. Rollins this year stole 31 bases, caught only eight times. It's a big part of the Phillies game. Yes, they hit a lot of home runs. But they steal a lot of bases as well. And their success rate, the best in the National League this season. Something unusual about this series so far. Brian, you talked about how he's, that was only his third hit. But he has not scored a run in this series. Not good for a leadoff hitter. Well, it's unusual for Jimmy Rollins and the Phillies. Shane Victorino having a chat there with Jerry Meals. I'm not sure what that was about, but Victorino stands right on top of the plate, much like Rollins does. And if Street throws him that sinker down and away. He's got to be careful not to step out of the box to make contact. Victorino squares. Gets a bunt down. It's a good one. And the only play is first. So instead of the stolen base attempt, the Phillies go with the sacrifice bunt. Executed perfectly by Victorino. And now the go-ahead run is in scoring position for Philadelphia. Perfectly executed here by Victorino. Softened it nicely. 
And the potential go-ahead run in scoring position just as Charlie Manuel hoped. And the Phillies are right where they want to be in their batting order. And they've been so good hitting with runners in scoring position so far in this series. Much better than the Rockies. Udley homered in the first. He quickly gave us an indication this was not going to be a pitcher's night altogether. Udley hammered one deep into the right center field bullpen in the first inning to give the Phillies the early lead. Got a single and a run scored in the fourth. He walked in the fifth. Two for three. Got away with one there. Back in the first inning with two outs. Udley found the sweet spot and hit it a long way, a 400-foot home run in the deep right center. Phillies 3 for 9 with runners in scoring position tonight. 10 for 26 in the series. They've been very clutch when they've had opportunities. Another sinker. One of the things to consider here is the way Tulowitzki is holding Rollins. He's got to bird dog him to keep him from getting a big lead. As you said earlier tonight, Brian, yeah, the outfielders play deep, so they really have virtually no chance to throw out a fast runner on a routine single. So he's holding him close, but as a result of holding him, big hole on the left side. Utley doesn't hit the ball there that much, but if you keep throwing that sinker, he might. Garrett Atkins giving up a lot of the line. One gone, and Street checks on Rollins. Rollins has been known to steal third as well. You don't know if he'll be running at a spot like this, but because Atkins is so far off the bag at third base, if he gets any kind of jump, it's going to be tough for Atkins to cover the bag. And while some of the problems for Torrey Alba have been Pitcher driven, not holding runners. He has a very poor caught stealing ratio. Ugly little half swing. That's a fair ball. Going to be a tough play. Street over the top, not in time. He had no angle to make that throw. And Ugly is safe at first. Helton hung in there as long as he could, but ultimately pulled his foot off the bag as Ugly reaches on an infield hit on an excuse me swing. Very, very difficult play for the pitcher to make here because once he picks the ball up, the base runner is between him and the base. So he's got to get the ball to Helton over the top of him. Close play. Very close play. Ron Culpa signaled that Helton was off the bag. I'd like the throw beat him, but I can't tell if his foot was still on the base. Check swing number. Yeah, it looked like the ball hit him. Yeah. Foot coming off Ooh. the base. That was awfully close. Helton trying to give him a target, but trying to get out of the way, too. That was, that was very hard to tell. Call goes to the Phillies. And after all of those looks, still not a decisive look. Called safe by Culpa. First and third for the Phillies with one away and the dangerous Ryan Howard up there. It appeared that Utley fouled that ball off of his body and then it rolled into fair territory. He was still in the batter's box, so he wouldn't have been out. But instead of a foul ball, it's a hit as Street misses inside. 2-0 and oh on Howard. Let's take another look. Watch after the ball is fouled or hit into the ground. Did it come up and hit Chase? Yeah, it looked like it hit him in the shin and rolled up his arm a little bit and hit him in the arm, rather. That's unusual, though. Usually a hitter will freeze when that mm -hmm. happens if the ball hits him. Howard sends one in the air to left. This is well hit. 
plenty deep to score the run. And the Phillies are going to take the lead. Udley's going to tag and make it to second. So Rollins scores. Philadelphia with a 6-5 to five lead as Ryan Howard does what he does best, and that's drive and runs, his second ribby of the game. Like he took an inside-out swing at a fastball and really got the barrel on it. Target was away, and the pitch had a lot of the plate. He wasn't trying to pull the ball, but he got a real good piece of it. He's got great power the other way. And now watch Jimmy Rollins. He didn't take anything for granted here. He hustled right through home plate knowing Chase Utley was advancing. He didn't want to have a double play prevent him from scoring. That's a big move for Utley. Now he's in scoring position with two outs. And a base hit scores another run. All right, one run lead in the ninth. Might get to be more than one run, and who's up? Brad Lidge loosening for the Phillies. The Rockies will have Hawk leading off and then to the top of the order. Carlos Gonzalez and Dexter Fowler. Jason Word with two outs, ugly at second. Tori Alba unhappy with that call. Three balls and no strikes. Got Ibanez on deck. There is a base open at first. Another, another one of those 3-0 counts, too, that you can't take for granted that he's going to be taking. Street comes on in the ninth in a tie game, gives up the run. Rollins started it with a two-strike single, a sacrifice bunt, an infield hit, and a sacrifice fly from Howard. And now Wirt draws the walk. And runners at first and second for Ibanez. And the Phillies have managed to quiet down this sellout crowd here at Coors Field. Well, the one thing that Jim Tracy's wrestling with right here, I'm sure Brian is, he's already given up the lead and he's thrown 18 pitches. That's not a ton. But depending on what happens, he might need him tomorrow to finish a game and he doesn't want to use him up. Two hits and a walk against Houston Street. And now Ibanez is up there. Three walks in this game for Ibanez, including a walk with the bases loaded. Swings away. Torre Alba picks it up fair. And the side retired. The Phillies take the lead. Ryan Howard with his second RBI of this game. Puts Philadelphia on top. And here comes Brad Lidge for the bottom of the ninth.
right now, Rockies fans or Phillies fans. Even with the Phillies enjoying a one-run lead in the bottom of the ninth, it has been a long year for Brad Lidge with 11 blown saves. And you can say this is the postseason right here for Philadelphia. If Lidge saves this game, right back to where they were last year and well on their way. This was the talk before the postseason started that the Phillies will go as far as Brad Lidge will take them if he can finish games like he did last year. We're about to find out. Brad Hobb leads off, came in on the double switch. Charlie Manuel said he was encouraged by Lidge's last three outings. As you see Ben Francisco taking over for Ibanez in left. A defensive upgrade for the Phillies with a one-run lead. And Hop sends one over to Udley. Two pitches and one out for Brad Lidge. A lot of his problems this year have been command. Got a good fastball, but hasn't been able to hit his spots with it. A slider that's a heartbreaking slider that looks like a curveball because it breaks virtually straight down. But when he's pitching to the middle of the plate, when his command is not good to the corners, he's been getting hit hard. Here's the hottest Rocky hitter, Carlos Gonzalez. Three hits tonight. Three runs scored tonight from the leadoff position. He hit a monster home run in the fourth. Last year, the batting average against Brad Lidge's fastball was 176. This year, it was 364. Primarily because he was pitching behind in the count. Brad Lidge grew up right here in the Denver area. He's from Inglewood, Colorado, a south suburb of Denver. Cherry Creek High School, then Notre Dame. Well, if he can figure out a way to get this guy out, he'll win the lottery tonight. And Lidge falls behind Gonzalez, 3 and 0. Gonzalez has eight hits in this series. Six in the last two games. That includes two doubles, a home run. He's stolen a base. Take it all the way. One thing about this at bat, Gonzalez has not faced him before. And that slider can be so tough to lay off. I know it's three and one. But it's hard not to swing at it when he's making good pitches with it. Three and one to Gonzalez. And a bouncer foul. Lidge works himself back into the count. Three and two. And that was that wasn't his best slider. That was just kind of a get over slider to change speeds, and it worked. It was a good pitch, three and one. Lidge was on the mound for the final out of the World Series last year. Untouchable a season ago, the 3-2. Gonzalez spoils one right off his foot. Another slider. Colorado. Has been able to come back quite a bit this year. Third most comeback wins in the National League. 41 of those. They're down a run. And two outs away from falling behind two games to one in this best of five series. Three straight sliders. Gonzalez has put good swings on pitches tonight in all locations. The last one may have been the most impressive with the double he hit in the seventh inning off Scott Ayer. A good pitch down and away, and he went with it to left center field. Gonzalez has some pop in his bat. 13 home runs during the regular season. The 3 2. Gonzalez takes ball four. The tying run is aboard. The winning run comes to the plate. And it's going to be Jason Giambi off the bench as Manuel barks at Jerry Meals. 
Well, it's the Phillies' turn to bark at him because the Rockies were doing some barking last inning in the top half of the inning, I should say, when Houston Street was out there. In fact, when the inning ended, the top of the ninth, Jorvi Torrealba stood at home plate and talked to Meals for a long time. Giambi's second appearance. Good speed at first on a potential extra base hit in the outfield playing deep. The winning run at the plate. Giambi takes a ball. It's been Giambi who has taken the young Rockies, Gonzalez and Fowler, and helped them relax in pressure situations. And now the veteran Giambi in the crosshairs here in the ninth inning. A long ball wins it. A double play ends it. Gonzalez takes off. Giambi swings and misses. Gonzalez steals second. A big steal of second base. And now the tying run in scoring position. Rockies taking advantage of Brad Lidge, who does not like to throw to first base. He'll step off and throw over, but doesn't really like to hold runners. And Gonzalez got a huge jump. No chance at all for Ruiz. What a night Gonzalez is having. A lot of those walk-offs late in the season, too, and they were doing some serious celebrating. Giambi responsible for a couple of those. Little pop-up. Foul territory. And a big out for Lidge. Out number two as Giambi is retired. And now the Rockies down to their final out. Brad Lidge has given up the walk, but now an out away. Back on June 20th, Todd Helton. A walk-off home run. Part of the dramatic final couple of months for the Colorado Rockies. That night they beat the Pirates. Win gave the Rockies their 15th win in a 16 game stretch as Helton warms up his bat once again. Well, remember what Ryan Madsen did last time up when he heated him up with some fastballs up out of the zone and Helton couldn't get on top of any of them. He has good numbers against Lidge, 4 for 11 in his career. But this was not a pitching coach visit. This was the manager going out to talk to his closer. Well, just like the Phillies in the top of the ninth, the Rockies are right where they want to be in this spot. Their best hitter at the plate. That was a good visit, I'm sure, from Charlie Manuel, though, to really pump Lidge up and get him, try to help him get through this and get back on the right track. Two outs. Tying run at second in Gonzalez. And Helton takes ball. And tried to go upstairs to see if he would chase, and he didn't. Infield's got to try and knock down anything that comes their way. If they, if they can dive and knock it down to keep it from getting into the outfield. Prevent Gonzalez from tying the game. Got a right-handed hitter on deck. Don't want to put the potential winning run on base. But so far, nothing for Helton to hit. Both aces are lined up for tomorrow. Cliff Lee for the Phillies. Ubaldo Jimenez for the Rockies. Two and one. Todd Helton, a veteran hitter, batting champion, former batting champion, fourth in the league in hitting this year. 2-0, and oh, he didn't even offer it a pitch that he knew he couldn't do much with. He's waiting for something he can drive middle of the plate in. He's still got the count in his favor. And that one misses upstairs, and the count goes to 3-1. and one. So now Helton... In the driver's seat, the base open at first, but Helton represents the winning run. Troy Tulowitzki on deck.
And Helton draws the walk. Yeah, nowhere near. Even the 2-0 pitch I don't think was supposed to be a strike, but they got the call. And this could have been the discussion Charlie Manuel had. It was that pitch around him. If he gets behind in the count, that's fine. You can go after him. But otherwise, they'll work to Tulowitzki. Helton will give way to Eric Young Jr., who can fly. Eric Young Jr., one of the fastest players in the game, put on this postseason roster for this reason, to be able to score in a spot like this. If he scores in this inning, the game's over. He represents the winning run. And the Rockies send up their best power hitter. 232 mark with two out runners in scoring position. Not his best mark among his great stats for the year, but a tough out. Tulowitzki narrowly missed a home run his last time up. Hit a sacrifice fly that tied the game. Two on, two out. And Lidge struggling to get the ball down. Again, it's the command of the fastball. He, he's not hitting spots. When he's getting a head strike one, then he can dictate with that slider. But some similarities tonight to his struggles for the year. Lidge has been behind every hitter in this ninth inning. But he does have two outs. Tulowitzki pops it up. This should do it. Ben Francisco will call it and catch it, and the Philadelphia Phillies win game three as Brad Lidge comes.